That was like a Friday. So um, it's definitely tomorrow's like uh, I think four to six or eight knots, even I'm sure all day. So it's a really good day. Yeah. Good day for flat air. Flat air love no wind. They, they hate they hate cloud. They hate rain, and they hate um, like um, more than fifteen knots. So you got to try and fish those days, which are rare. But that doesn't do all the above, um, which we'll try and sort out as we go along today. There's Stewie. Stewie's coming. <laughs> the last gentleman hasn't come yet, though. The last guy's here. Okay, so everyone's here. Good stuff. Okay. Is do the air kind of a bit cooler, guys? It's a bit warm, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. a bit, are you not too cold? <laughs> yeah, good death <desert> back. <laughs> There's another vent just there, but it doesn't come out very strong. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so let's do his coming. Let's find that door there. He's probably having a sleep. <laughs> Has anyone been flattered fishing in the last couple of days? Has the stop weed come in at all, guys? A little bit. Okay, yeah, I was at the pin on Sunday, it was um, not too bad as well. Um, oh, was it? When did I go to Sunday? Sunday or Monday? <coughs> Every day, yeah, no. <laughs> I think it was, uh, might have been. Oh, here's Stewie. Oh, yeah, awake, Stewie. Hey, I said all good things about you, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, so Stuart went out on Monday. Monday. Do I go Sunday or <coughs> Monday? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday? Saturday. Was it? Timmy. With Timmy? Saturday. Oh, it was Saturday? Yeah. Okay, I was too. Yeah. So I went Saturday um, and the stock weed wasn't too bad. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Um, I just asked the boys about it. It's not weed around. Yeah, but I it, it, it generally that. starts around now. And if you don't know what it is, it's that really mossy, long, slimy weed that gets on everything you touch. And when we're talking about trolling, which we're talking about tonight, Lures are digging on the bottom, and sometimes you just drop a lure back, and as soon as it dies and hits the bottom, it's already got weed on that comes to the top. So it's part of the parcel, but we'll talk about that later. So anyhow, welcome along tonight. I'm Doug, this is Stuart, and we're going to try and help you out. Um, we love flat air fishing, it's one of our favourite things to do, especially against each other. We're very competitive, and we give each other heaps. And, um, and we're obviously fished a flat air classic. I've fished it for, I think, might have missed four or five over the last 25 or 26 years, or it is. Um, and so he's been fishing it probably for 15, 20 years probably? Uh, I think I've done about 10. Is that all? Yeah. I think I've been too young. Right about. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so last year was the first year, we've always been in opposition to each other in the boat, and last year was the first year we branched up together to fish in the Flatter Classic, and we only come third, but it was all right. Mm. Didn't do much pre-fishing prior. Um, but it was really hard because he didn't want to give me his good spots, so I didn't want to give him my good spots, but we had to do it because <laughs> we had to try to do it right. So very, very hard. this year I think we'll do better because we want to release the A plus spots instead of just the A's. And uh, yeah, so let's see how we go. There we go. Um, but it's really great fun. Flatter fish is like a, it's a lucky dip. It's a bit really flatter. Like Brim, you'll know it's got to be either that or that, right? It's, that's, well, it's a whiting similar, but flatties can be that or they can be that. So that's the beauty of flathead. So one, one cast with a hard body or a troll on the lure might be 39, the next one might be 95, you know, and they're great, great fun. So that's why one of the reasons why we love catching them. Yeah. And they're really good eating too if you like to keep them. So I always keep a feed that Stewie knows. Stewie doesn't like it too much. I hate it. We go to all these good spots in preparation and Doug wants to murder them all, but anyway, <laughs> that's all right. Their mates will come in. Yeah, that's right. Well, re reload, yeah, yeah. reload. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, uh, so we're going to take you through the, take you through the gear um, we might actually start at the trolling end first and then on the casting end at the end. Um, we both like to troll. Um, how many people here fish in the Flathead Classic and how many people don't know about Who doesn't know about the Flathead Classic? Well, most people know about it, most of you do. Okay, so it's just a competition held every year. Um, it's, a, it's a great get-together, but the COVID's killed the last three years because it's been um, online only, not, not the... Um, so, yeah. Gathering yeah, at the end right. of the night yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you'll have yeah. a few drinks and talk about the yarns about the flat that you lost. Um, <laughs> so the whole down the end of uh, Smith Street in the park down there where the Southport Amateur Fishing Club and Sport Fishing Club is. It's held by the Sport Fishing Club. And um, it's a great thing. I think juniors are, I don't know the pr price here, but I think 170 or 150 and adults are about 300. Oh, and, so 350 now. 350 now, is it? It's getting up there, but 
for that, you do get a bag of stuff for your team. They're two man, three man teams. You can't do a one man team, but you know, two or three. And I think it's um, your bag of stuff would have to be around about five hundred bucks worth at yeah. least. Yeah, you'll get a tournament shirt and yeah, you get tournament shirt as well. Too, so. About the bag full of everything, like yeah. heaps of lures and heaps of. Um, you can nearly just everything. walk in with it with a rod, and everything else is in the bag. So that's pretty with well. Leader, right? line, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, braid, and then um, and then every night you get fed a fairly good meal as well, and everyone has a big meal, and they obviously sell drinks there. And then you go into the um, prizes, so everyone has a number, like a badge number, which you have to take a picture of with your fish. So anything over 40 centimetres, you have to photograph on the sticker they give you on the night, and uh, on the day, when you pre-register. And then um, and there's a point system on that. So for, like we didn't get a prize yet, so last year we come third, we didn't got nothing. <laughs> so it's not the, it's about, uh, it's not about winning the prize for coming first, second or third or down the tenth or whatever. It's about the lucky draw. So if you didn't catch a fish, you're still going to the major prize, which is all the lucky draws. So they have lucky draws at night, they give out stuff and then, uh, and they're really good prizes, then uh, it's like the last man standing. So they draw out like four numbers, I think every night, is it? Right about? Yeah, it's about that. Yeah, and it's yeah. like 20 people anyhow, 20 adults and about 10 kids or something like that. And the kids uh, win a boat and a motor and it goes down, the, like the basic number 10 would probably get maybe two or three hundred bucks a year, goes yeah. up to there. And then the adults, it's the last man standing, 20 adults, I think it's 20. And then um, the first guy that gets called out of those 20 guys sitting around the, the big boat that they win, uh, one could win it. Um, they might walk away with about three or four or five hundred bucks worth of stuff for the first one. And next minute, you're getting like two grand worth of gear, three grand, five grand, ten grand. I think second prize is holiday. Money. Yeah, holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Over to yeah, um, it's solid really, The prizes are really, yeah. really good. Really good. So that's what I'm saying. You don't need to catch fish to be in the major draw for the prizes. So that's a good comp. About, I think, 300 k's of the prizes, I mean, mm. down there. How many people would be? Uh, 160 tens at the moment. 160 tens at the moment, yeah. So they don't try and get around two, yeah, two to 300, 250 tens and run about um, 600 angles. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, at night time, the socialising is fantastic. And you learn a lot and meet a lot and hear little sad stories. A lot of sad stories happen and a lot of funny stories happen. And Where guys, do you think your boat, though? Like, yeah. So, uh, so that's the boat ramps are pretty busy. <laughs> If you've got a yeah. Maitland Canal, that is the spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, most guys will put it on right next to the venue. And a lot of guys just park their boat there at night just yeah. uh, when they're having a the fee. But for, for safety reasons, they do have security there, but it's better if you were to take the boat home and come yeah. back. Yeah. You've got to drop your score sheets. The only thing fishing is like 6.30 till 4. And yeah. you've, got, you've got an hour to get back or an hour and a half to get your sheet in. Yes. So you go at 5.30. It's like a cut-off <laughs> limit if you're over that, it's bad luck. Yeah. And they put your score sheets in. Uh, I think they do maybe do it online. I don't know about this year. Don't know. Sorry? Yeah. Sort of yeah. Yeah. Got the app. But it didn't work in Top Gun. No. Nah. Yeah, that's right. Shocking. Yeah. 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 So the one they had last year wasn't too bad, the one we used last, last year. Was yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So anyhow, um, it's a great comp. That's what you're going to get. If you want to do it, you've still got time to register. Um, we'll be there. Mm. Okay. So, gear. Okay, uh, trolling gear, Stewie's got his rods there. I didn't bring mine in, but I'll show you exactly yeah. the same type that he is. One of each today. Dougie's got... Which is the lighter one? Uh, that one. Yeah. 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 So, Stuart, I'll tell you, my, my gears, because uh, I've got to be using gear on behalf of my clients that come out, customers and friends that come in here. And, um, and I use a lot of crappy gear, I can tell you. Not that I'm trying to sell you guys crappy gear, but... No, it, start, it, starts, <laughs> yeah. it starts off good. After I'll, a couple of weeks, it's crappy I'll gear. use a Sienna with a, with a you know, $49 rod and go trolling. That's my rod for the day, trolling, you know. And I'll catch as many fish as I will using my $1,000 outfit. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. To, you know, yeah. <laughs> Put the hat on. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, anything that's sort of half okay is going to cost a couple hundred bucks. Okay, something like that's that's on the special one for one ninety nine to build up. But that's the sort of thing you want to use. When something's got a fairly light tip, you need to be able to see that tip working when you're trolling. Um, it needs to be around about at least six six to seven foot six long. Seven foot like this seven foot is the most popular size. Yeah. Um, and a two and a half thousand size reel is perfect. And around about sort of six to ten pound braid is to go. Um, when you're trolling, if you should fairly light drag, you don't want it too too tight because the chances are whatever you're going to hook when you're trolling can be quite big. So my biggest flat I've ever caught has been trolling, and um, and I've lost. I know I lost one over a meter trolling, but I didn't get it. But I 
saw it a few times. Um, and they tend to do that when they swallow a lure that size, it's right down their throat. And, um, and they love the little lures. And when they do the big head shakes, um, that's when they shave your line and it's all over. So um, that's why I like to keep my line light, that makes the lure work better. My leader, I have a bite trace still to use. Yeah, yeah, always use a bite trace. So I fish a lot lighter leader than Dougie, yeah. and then a lighter bite trace, lighter everything really. But it's, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, purse preference. Yeah. yeah. So that's sort of rod, that's sort of reel still to show his at the moment. Yeah. And then on leader on size, I use um, about 12 pound as my um, main leader. I'm going to bite trace about 16 to 20 pounds at the end of that. So I do like a little um, Albright and I run about 100 mil or 150 mil of 16 to 20. Um, it doesn't take away too much of the action, but if it swallows it down and they do the big head shakes, you get a really big one, you get a lot more chance of getting, it, getting that fish in. If you were to run your drag too tight, or even just a little bit tight, and they do those head shakes, it's just like running something, a really tight sand, a really tight line and just put a sandpaper over it, it'll just cut it, right? If the line's a bit loose, it's quite hard to cut it. So you've got to have that same action. Here's the sandpaper, his, his top and bottom mouth, uh, inside his mouth, and um, if you have it too tight, it'll just ping the line and it's all gone. So you better to have a really loose drag and let him just peel it off, peel it off, peel it off. And uh, when he does his head shakes, then he won't lose it, or less chance anyhow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, as I said, light tip's really important because that tip is actually shuddering when you're trolling it. So it's like, like that the whole time with the lure just swimming. And as soon as it stops, you've got weed on there. So you need to know exactly when you've got weed on there because that's when you wind it back up. They won't even look at it with weed. So you must take that weed off. Or a fish. The amount of big fish that oh, you catch true. trolling and you think it's weed, I've tried shaking them off. And you get them in and they're like 80, you know? Yeah, yeah. But they just don't move. They yeah. hit like weed, they swim like weed. Yeah. You just wind them in, they're out the boat, you net them and yeah, yeah what, it's over. They're real big when I lost trolling. I was trolling a new, um, one of the, these flow shads, which are one of my favorite lures, they're Japanese, that were Jackson. Only very small. And uh, I, I was trolling, I was on my own trolling two rods and um, I thought I'd, hook um, the seed, like the, the weed on the bottom of a clump of weeds. So I place like trolls around clumps of weed in amongst sand, amongst that sort of thing. And the robber's just like, did, not doing anything, like Stuart said, just hooked yeah. up. And I thought, oh, it's weed. So I just kept driving forward and I wind my other line up. First time it's down at the end of the backing. And then I grab the rod of the rod hole, I pull it back to neutral, and I'm trying to jerk it off. <laughs> and then it, then it took off. And I thought, oh, Stingray, so that only gave me more, more hard time. I'd wind it really hard and give it a heaps and give it a heaps. And then anyhow, I'd get it in, get it in, get it in. That's a good fight. That was a good fight. And then the water's only about probably a metre deep and fairly clear, semi-clear. And then this massive crocodile swam past me and I just absolutely lost it because <laughs> I couldn't believe I'd just done all that before. And I knew I'd, I'd damaged, <laughs> done some damage. Uh, and anyhow... Um, eventually, um, I lost it. I was about another five minutes, right near the boat. Um, and uh, the lure come in and it had, the back treble and ring was gone. And that was probably when I was giving the first big shakes. Um, and I just had one hook out of the two, the two snapped off on the front treble and the top hook was um, bent out. Brand new lure the packet. I got, still got it home, I kept it for a, <laughs> for a memory of a meter lost flat. I, I, and I've just, Millions of times I've flatted off the Gold Coast. I've never caught a meter yet. I've got nine, I think 98.4 my biggest. I've got about 10 over 90, but never got a meter yet. So. You need a longer hand so, you get, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. I'll throw the car set next time, bro. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, that's the sort of outfit, guys, um, that I use for controlling. And Stu, you want to show us yours, Yeah, so I use um, pretty similar, a little, um, little bit lighter. So the tip is very light, as Dougie was saying, it's mm. really slight. This one's got a soft tip, but heaps of backbone. So I can really whip the weed off. So we'll go through it a bit later, mm. but um, it's just a bit, just a bit more of the high end stuff. Um, I always used to run three pound braid trolling, always. Ne like never anything other than three pound fire line. Now I've jumped to the better stuff and I'm just going off diameter. So mm. this stuff here is, um, one of the new YGK braids. Um, we've got some downstairs, but it's very similar to the grappler stuff. And um, it's 16 pound, but it's the same thickness as the three pound that I used to use. Um, 
the three pound probably broke at about 10 anyway. It mm. always broke above what it said. But this stuff here, it's just a bit more peace of mind. It's very, very thin. Um, as Dougie said before, you use lighter lines because they do cut through the water a lot nicer and you do get a lot less line drag. Um, again, I use a, just a light leader. I just use eight pound um, leader and a, just a really small bite leader. So my bite leader say six inches. So only from there to there. And just to a little, um, like a little fast hatch clip where you can tie straight onto your lure. If you are gonna tie onto the lure, even if it's got a split ring on it, always tie a loop knot. Lure swims a lot nicer with it. Um, you do have to check them because occasionally they do break in the loop just because of the constant wear when the lure's swimming. But um, it just works really good. Just pass it around. So just pass around this braid. Um, we'll tell you what it is at the end. But, how how um, heavy it is, sort of guess how heavy yeah. it is. So really what you're saying is that in the old days, the, the strength of the line um, would go thinner because you still wanted to you know, make sure you use yeah, the right. that's right. correct. It wasn't because, um, unless you were trying to get a certain line class, no, you got them by the thickness. So in those days, three pound was about as light as you could get, and that yeah. was still rather thick back still in the day. Because I got yeah. fluoro and uh, capolin or whatever the pens, and you know, like um, sand flat fishing cutter. Yeah, yes. See some of his stuff with the surface lure thing. Yes. Um, and I've always thought, well, if you've got fluorocarbon and you can get twelve pound, why wouldn't you use it? But compared to say six pound. Yeah, yeah. But what I notice is the lure doesn't. No, so the, the action is much better on thinner line. So. Yeah. That's really important, and that's what, even why, like I would run, love to run 16 pound lead all the way through, or 20, yeah. but I just can't because I'm not going to lose less bites by far, yeah. and, um, and yeah, it just works better. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to swim as hard, it's not going to swim as deep because you've got mm. more line drag. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. They're going to see more. You mentioned the clip on the end. Yep. Um, it's funny because I never do that, I do a loop knot or whatever, but I've yep. got a mate out who's joining in the buddy comp on Sunday, he has a blue stock plus six at all. Yep. He had this crappy old thing that had been sitting on his rod for five years with a, like a snap scorpion basically. Yeah. He caught the biggest fish of the day on that. Yeah, the clip doesn't bother the fish at all. Yeah. That's one thing that um, yeah, I've noticed. Snot weed yeah. Over. Definitely gets more snot weed yeah. on that little cut. On the little burr. Little burr, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gets your finger too when you're yeah. trying to push it closed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. when you've got kids, it's easy just because they get bored with one lure, so you just quickly put them on and throw it back out again. But for yourself, loop knots. Stewie doesn't use, I use loop knots as well, at yeah. all the clip. Yeah. Stewie ties I, his tight. Nah, I like loop knots on lures. I hate oh, loop knots right? on a jig head. Oh, I didn't know that. I hate them, because they always slack tight and they break. I broke one, just, I pulled a lure off just before because it was jig head, and we're not talking soft plastics, but I'll cut this off. Have you got crosses? No, I've got this one. It's found. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times that um, you like, you might cast or like with lighter leader especially, and see how the loop's actually broken in the middle? It's where it's been pulled slack and tight heaps, and it wears it, it flattens it, and then it breaks it. Is there any yeah. um, burring on that on that little loop at all above it, above that little thing? You can feel a bit choppy, rough? No, I think it's not too bad. I reckon yeah, it's had a few. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's probably had a fish bite. It's probably a fish that did it, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dogs is never burred because it doesn't catch it. Yeah, six inch bite leader to the other leader. Oh, it's an all this is a little bright, yeah. I just did it all right because it's very quick, I can do it until done. You know, so, um, hence why I do that. Yeah. What would be your minimum length of a uh, uh, flat? Around about 700. Yeah. But um, I like this, what that meter. I, I don't want to get caught on my guides. I use, I, in the bit better end, I just use like a Zodis rod or something like that. They've got really small guides. Or I use Loomis as well. And um, they tend to, um, don't, they don't like knots. So you get a lot of fouled up stuff. Yeah. Um, and as windy, it gets caught around the guide before it casts out and then snapping it off, whatever. So um, I find if I keep a shorter guide and have my braid always in uh, to the outside of the rod that I'm going to cast, I never have a drama. If yeah. you tie an FG knot, it's yeah. fine. You can wind it in as far as you want. Do you yeah. want an FG, no? No. Nah. Dougie's, like, Dougie's like this at the best Old of school. times. I'm trying to look at I'm trying to see it. Wind's blowing it around. <laughs> plus, plus 50 magnifiers. Hey, didn't you the other day, Stewie, forget to put you guys through one of the guys? That was, that was you. That was me, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that's a little bite leader going around. Yeah, Terry. Stewie, that, uh, that 
Yeah. It's very round, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Light braids used to be very flat. Four yeah. line was always flat. It was a fused braid. Whereas mm. anything that's an eight carrier now, or even four carriers, they're quite round in profile. Mm. They cast better. They're less mm. drag. Yeah. And if you were casting a lot with it, it they've got good abrasion resistance. For yeah, better. Setup. Yeah, yeah. Well. way better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of braids these days are pretty good, I think. Like, yeah. um, I, but please. Like we get a lot of guys say the braids crap, like the kids break it, but not generally we pick up a little crack in his guy when they bring the so could bring the rod in please. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a crack at all the chip on the from one of the guys. And that's all it takes. It's so sharp. Ceramic's so sharp. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um so it's true, that's your outfit, mate. Yeah. yeah. That's what you like? Yeah. So um when we when you troll the flatter classic, you can only use one rod per person at a time. Obviously when I go out my own or with my kids we're trolling four rods, you know, between two of us, so. Yeah. Um, but it's really important if you don't troll the one, um, or if you are trolling two, you work one. You don't actually put them both in the rod hole and just troll them. And if you do put the rod hole, make sure your rod hole is the ones that are out the side like that, not up near like that. Unless you're trolling over really shallow water and you want that, that lure not digging to the, to the bottom of the time, then you might put it on that angle, on the boat, if that makes sense. But you actually want it down low and nearly, the tip nearly touching the water. So that's even down an angle low. It'll get those little lures down really deep. And um, if you want to get more depth, so some like a little, um, uh, where are those, Stewie? These are little tango shads. So yeah. these little fellows here, I'll pass this around. These are probably one of the most popular lures we sell for flatties in the little ones. Um, they get down sort of five feet. But if you were to drop, that's at say from here, the back wall behind the can, uh, behind the boat, which is about the distance you're going to troll. Um, but if you were to drop that back, say, 30 metres and put your rod tips down in the load of the water, it'll probably get down about 10 feet or 9 feet. It makes such a big difference, if you didn't know that. So further back you go, the more lower to the water, the deeper it gets. Yep. And if you go too fast trawling, the problem's going to be that, um, let the tell you, the, the, the lures just, they just spiral yeah. out, they blow out. So a lot of these little lures have tiny little bibs, and um, they just don't like water pressure. They pop out speed. Yep. Yeah. 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 You can't go trolling around at six knots. <coughs> Micro mullets probably. Micro mullets just hold yeah, it in. Yeah. Just hold That's it in. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Something uh, like a bit, little bit larger with a bigger bib could hold in a, a bit more speed. But to be honest, you want to go pretty slow anyway. You don't want to rip it past their face. You want them to be mm. able to see it. So any questions the rods and reels before we go to the lures, guys? Everyone's all good. So that's two and a half thousand. Three is okay. Yeah. Um, and like I troll the 4,000, that's what I've grabbed the rod holder first. I'll use that. Doesn't really worry me. Doesn't worry the fish. Um, but definitely um, leader wise and line is important though. Yep. Yeah. And the leader length for trolling versus just. Yeah, same. I oh, just same, mate. Same, yeah. Thanks. Definitely. And um, yeah, that's about it the rod and reels. And then we go now to the lures. So, anyway, is that braid gone right down the end now? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's how. Who would have said that was 10 pound? No, 4 pound? 6 pound? Yeah, and now it's 20 pound. Yeah, 20 pound. So it's very thin. Yeah. So I use that actually on my two and a half thousands. Well, especially I'm fishing the deep, because if I get something decent on, even chewy, whatever, it's, I'm not going to lose it. And it's light enough to trawl. Yeah. yeah. That would be 3 pound back five yeah. years ago. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> With like uh, um, fins or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, lures. So lures for trawling. So Stewie, what's your favourite out of say what I hear, mate? Or, or what, what do you use? Colour. I will go <laughs> style-wise before colour. Style-wise, I don't like short and fat. I like long and skinny. Um, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> built, built for flatties. Um, so <laughs> short. And I'd probably Exhibit say. A. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like the new. Shimano Bantam shads, that's a really good shape. Um, we'll pass it around and like the Zeric that went around, I like that type of profile. I don't like really big. The Zeric's like are fairly small. short and fat though. They're, yeah. not, they're not thin like that. Oh, There's not much in it. Yeah, a little bit there. Yeah. Quite, quite a heavy little belly. But um, yeah, I don't like anything too short, too fat. I think the shim is better than a roll. Like a fatter lure rolls more, whereas a skinny lure shim is more. Mm. I think that def it's definitely a lot better. And when you're trolling in thick weed, you can shake weed a lot better with something that um, shimmies rather than rolls. So, yeah. so just we'll talk about the shake weed while you're on it. So, 
you want to teach yep. them how to do that, Stu? It doesn't work yeah, all so, the time, but it works a fair bit. Yeah, so say, you, say you're trolling and you're always, as Dougie said, you're always working your lure. So when, when I work it, I kind of have it, I never go behind myself. I always stick like, say, straight out and I'll work it up, say, to about there and then I'll drop it back. And then if I feel weed on it, I kind of just sharp shake, just shake the absolute living daylights out of it. And um, if it comes off, it comes off. You'll feel it come off and you'll feel the lure keep swimming again. And then if it doesn't, you just got to wind it in and take it off. And sometimes it'll come off and you wind it in actually as well. Yeah. A bit faster. Yeah. But um, more, like generally, if it falls off and I'm halfway and I just wind it in, it's just easier just to check it. You don't want to put it back out and there have been a little bit of weed on there. It's not doing depth or it does the occasional spin. It just doesn't look right. Yeah. And just but want yeah. to run through how you work the rod. I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Dougie's all over the place. But uh, yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, as I said, I just kind of work it. I kind of like pull it once and twice and then mm. I set it back. Mm. If it's really shallow, as Dougie said, I hold the rod very high mm. and I kind of just twitch the rod slowly. But um, honestly, like to be honest, if the fishing's slow, don't move your rod at all and just let the lure do the work and you'll catch them all that way. I mm. think you can overwork a lure um, if the fishing's a bit harder. Yeah. Are you judging yeah. that part of your rod on how hard it's digging into the Watch, Watching the sound. Yeah, okay. yeah. Watch so I just sound. watch the sound. So I know, and you're feeling the lure hit the bottom. So every now yeah. and then it might pause a little bit yeah. and yeah, then bit keep swimming. Okay. You yeah. kind of watch the rod tip. It'll always bounce because the lure's swimming. Yeah but it'll kind of pull a bit and then drop back. You want to hit in the bottom? You want to hit mm. it in the bottom. Yeah, and getting back to like where Dougie said, how far back your lure runs, it takes a little bit, but you get to figure out how, how far a lure needs to be back as to how deep it dives. Um, and I always run them as close to the boat as I can, so I still hit the bottom. Like if you just say you can hit the bottom metre your way, so what's it, say six metres, seven metres, um, I would put out that six or seven metres instead of running, say, 20 metres because the lure's not going to work as hard because it's got more line drag. Yeah, yeah there's more too, strap to the front of it. Too far to wind in to get the weed off too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so, time's the element. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but no, that's good. So that's about what yeah. I do. And Your I, action, I, Dougie? I, yeah, my action's like, um, I, I do the same. I sort of, that's about where I'm trawling when I'm driving the boat, about there. Yeah. And I sort of like to do one, two, three, four up. And then I'll drop it back, like Stewie said. Yeah. And as soon as you drop it back, you'll feel it get ripped out of your hand because they're following it. And yeah. then, especially when they're really biting hard, the more action you give it and that drop back, the more fish you're going to catch, 100%. And uh, it's always on the fall back. It, sometimes they, they'll hit it after like a second, a split second. You, you sit there and think, oh, yeah. nothing there. Next minute, whack, I hit it. But generally, it's, um, it's, it's sometimes, I don't think I've ever got it on the up. Always yeah, on the very, back. Very, very rarely. Very rare. yeah. It's always on the back. Yeah. And drop it back fairly quick. So the, the, fl- the lure actually comes up a little bit and stops that second. That's when they grab it. Okay. Can you come spam and touch with your arm when you do that? Yeah, not, oh, you are, otherwise you get tip wrapped sometimes. Um, so when you come back, ah. Uh, no, I flick loose yeah, line. I fl- yeah, I loose line. Yeah, yeah as fast as I can go back. As far, yeah. as far as you can get it back. Because the other yeah. good thing is, if you're in a really weedy area, the look, most of the lures are pretty buoyant. It floats mm. out of the weed. Yeah, so it'll back out of weed. Yeah. So if it just picks some up on its bib and it'll float, like, floats back out of it, then yeah. it's sweet. You know? Yeah, that's right, it comes off. Yeah. 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 Your biggest thing is you just want to maximise the fishing part. And, and that drag, so to speak. I'll throw it through there. I'll just show you how it works. Like, you can feel this later, but uh, my drag would be set. Yeah, probably about there. Access too tight for me. No, you fish tight, Dragon. No, when I'm, when I'm casting. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, Dougie has pulled so many hooks in the Flathead Classic because they're too tight. I read about that. I read that. <laughs> the fish are too big for me. That was the problem. You guys get a little ones, all right? But yeah. Anyhow, um, so <laughs> lures. Get, that's, that's the action. Now we go back to the lures again. So yeah. every lure has a different um, application. So, different application and a different area is going to work. So. The little lures um, and some of the biggest fish come from the shallowest water. So when you get that high tide, last hour of the run in, high tide, first hour or two of the run out, um, you want to be right up in those flats. And those flats where you can't quite see the bottom, it's all that murky green colour. Um, but you know there's weed clumps and there's sand and mud, whatever it might be. Um, they'll be up there and look for bait. There's lots of bait around. They'll be swimming around there feeding, okay? And, um, and 
it's a good idea if you can sort of, it'll come out low tide, it'll be dead flat sometimes, like to be just mud there or sand. And try and work out, you can go for a walk if you wanted to, but try and work out where your troll run's going to be in amongst the clumps. And you might sort of go that angle and that angle because you want to sort of keep on the sand but right next to the weed, if that makes sense. Okay? If you just go to the top of the weed, they will get them out of the weed as well, but not as much as, as the sand next to the weed yeah. or the mud next to the weed. This is up in the flats. Yeah. And up in the flats, um, I have trawled lures that are really um, like a biggest profile, but smaller bid, if that makes sense. And they, quite, they swim quite well. At, like my, my speed is about 2.4 k's and out of about four maximum k's now. Okay, so knots are probably one to 2.2 knots maybe. Yeah, two yeah. knots. Can you go pretty quiet? I mean, uh, I, well, that's a good question. And a lot of time when I've been on my own and, and I've got a fish on, not the other lures are sitting there and I pull back the neutral and just the wind blow and next minute it takes off. <laughs> and it's only doing like, I don't know, snail's pace. Yeah. And next time a rod's bending over the fish on it, you know. So they must just look at it and it's just swimming slowly. <coughs> uh, when the, yeah, it, that, yeah. It, I think you better go a little bit faster because you're trying to cover the ground as well. And uh, you look at the bait, if there's a bait fish and something's up its backside, it's not going to go slow, it's going to run away. So I think that uh, they get the, um, get them agitated to take it so yeah yeah i think the biggest yeah. thing is when you set if you're going too slow and when you kind of put your rod back like you do that drop back if when you finally pick up to the lure again the lure might be floating if you're going too slow or it's way out of the zone so you need to go a little bit quicker just to maintain that you want to float mm. float up a little bit but not heaps yep. yeah and they float pretty quick like most that's lures awesome. float really quick that's a flow shed um that's the one that same model as the big one but I get a lot of fish in this. So, and yeah, as I was saying, so sometimes the shallow, um, big, longer, bigger versions work well too in the shallows. Um, but, so we're talking like metre, a uh, metre deeper water or maybe 1.2 metres in the first lot of lures coming around. Um, once the fish sort of getting to add to the shallow water, Sue? Not really, no. no. I think that, yeah, the hardest thing is if it's really weedy, you've got to, it's, you're going to take off so much weed off your lures, but you've just got to do it. Hmm. Yeah, man who takes yep. off the most weed wins the Flato Classic if he's trolling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so once they, once the tide drops a bit, you're either going to get stuck on the bottom there in some pond, or you, or you get out of there in your boat. Um, and then when you've done that, you need to um, then work out where the flat are going to come out. There might be a little drain that runs out into the channel, and then you, that's where they're all going to slip out through that drain. Everyone, otherwise, they're going to get high and dry, right? So and um, you'll try and work out where that is and then they'll sit along that uh, sort of area in the channel maybe up to 100, 200 metres past that opening that comes out out of the drain where it drains into the channel and you just trawl up and down there but the little lures aren't going to work anymore because the bank's gone from that to, to like that and um, you need to find something that's sort of around that 6 to 10 foot diving range Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you up the ante, so you go a little bit bigger in the body of the size of the lure. These are, um, oh, there's, oh, these are, this is it, SX60 Eco Gear. Um, or you'll go to something a little bit bigger, type profile, like that type of thing there. So you've just gone a little bit bigger. The smallest profile that gets down deep at the moment that I've found is um, these little fellows here. I think aren't too bad. I think you've got one of those in your bags. Um, and the one from, um, the one I like, the Galaxian. Oh, Can you one. see what I see? Right there. Oh, there it is, right there, that's one. Yeah. yeah, I'll pass this around. They swim to about 12 foot. Yeah, 10 or 12 feet. Yeah. That, they are one of the best little lures out. Um, we've just ordered more, but we've run out just about. There's not many left downstairs. Um, but the new Rapalas that are out, the new Shads are really good. Um, this is not Stuart's like. Oh, these are actually thin Stuart, sorry. No, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just too but deep, they, I reckon. They do catch flatties. And um, I think last couple of years um, in the Flatter Classic, when they were doing it at the bags and stuff, everyone got one of the little Rapala um, little jacks. Jack Deep, yeah. Yeah, Jack Deep, so really good. That's, that's a better profile, I reckon, mm, personally. Mm. They're yeah. good. Um, but there's a lot of lures on the market that work really well. Um, Probably as 
big and chunky as I go in that sort of eight to 10 feet would be yeah, probably something in these, this sort of size. Actually, they'll get down deeper. That sort of size there. And then you go next level. So the next level, like Peter Bakula, those of you know Peter Bakula is a popular game fisherman. Um, he was very good at Flatty Classic back about 15 years ago. And he trawled lures that were double the size of that. Like double the size. They're actually mackerel lures. They're uh, man stretch 25s. Huge. And um, he'd be trawling in about sort of eight metres deep and get them hitting the bottom. He used to and, troll in a seaway. And get massive flathead. Um, and no one else knew how to do it or what to do until after his first time he won it. Or did really close to winning it. Um, but having lures like that sort of size, um, this, this one here I've done really well, especially up around um, sort of, yeah, back of Jacob's Well area, not too bad. Wherever you can find those steep banks that get down about 15 feet, they work really well as well. And they're a um, storm lure, they're really good. So those two, they're really good. And this one here is really good too, this is a Rapala. That's the sort of profile you want to kind of be using. Yeah. So like anyone that jack, like fishes for mangrove jacks during summer knows how many flatties you catch when you're trolling for jacks, like around mm. pontoons and that type mm. of thing. And you're always trolling that bigger lure that dives deeper, you catch heaps yeah, of flatties. Yeah, about that sort of, most of the are about four metres deep. Yeah. So they hit the bottom and tickle on the bottom, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But you really, I, I'd concentrate running that shallow water, so I like the little lures. Um, but we do do sometimes troll the kids, my kids in the deeper channels, edge, edge of the channels, and that's the sort of gear that we're using, which is fairly big. So trolling with the tide? Yeah, troll with the tide always, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's always the, the thing too, that's a good question. When you're up in the flats, you don't get much tidal run, so you can just do loops and figure eights and do everything you want. Um, once you get onto the edge of the channel and those drains run off, you've got to go with the current. Um, if you want to come around and go back the other way, you're going to get two runs in down with the current to one run coming back up. So you better off just pull them in, zoom up and come back down again. Yeah. That, I don't get used to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Always mm. with it. I've caught them yeah. against it, but you get a lot more. Yeah. And you get double the time in coming away. Yeah. So the, no one's asked the question yet, how, how do you get your lures to dive down when you're going at three knots with the current? So you just got to go faster. So you go, Faster. So before we're talking about at 2.2 k's and out about four is <coughs> up on the flat so there's no current. When you are going with the current, you might be doing up to about six k's an hour, which is about three and a half knots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe four. So that in, makes in, sense if you fish with the current because the fish would have to face into it. Yeah, they face into that's it. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, mate. Spot on. Yeah, that's it. Yep. 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 Yeah, so they, they'll swing around and grab it, yeah. and it's and quite an aggressive take as well because they, they don't want to lose energy going you know, against the current or with the current, whatever it might be. Yeah. So yeah, just um, yeah, do the same thing. Work it yeah. in deep water as well. Yeah. Um, any questions on that so far, folks? Yes, Terry. Uh, UV or not UV? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, UV or not to UV? <laughs> uh, so definitely, um, okay, a couple of secrets. I put S factor on my hard bodies, okay? A little bit. And that's UV enhanced. Does that help it? I know the S factor part does, but the UV on it, I don't know. Um, most lures these days have some UV tint to it, like a little bit of. Um, they might uh, have a little bit under the gills. Yellow or, or orange something. or something on it. Yeah. Um, and not many lures, except for the clear ones, um, are pretty well the only ones that don't have any UV yeah. on them, I think. Yeah. So, Terry, I think um, it would help maybe a little bit. Yeah. And like clear water, dirty water. Yeah, so uh, colour-wise, yeah, like I love white. I love white in soft plastics, love it in hard bodies, love it in anything. Um, so in that case, um, I would definitely say in dirty water, uh, run whites or, or something like that, in that nature. Orange, yeah, it's good. Um, but when you go to um, clear water, um, I, I like, like uh, red's a real good colour. No, orange is a good colour in, dirty water, in clear water too. Uh, but naturals are really good. Anything bait fish sort of colour, natural colours, is probably the go. I know it used yeah, to. Yeah, I just like solid colours. I don't like much transparent colour. I think yeah. solid colour works in clean water, dirty water. It doesn't really matter. Um, honestly, like the old saying, dark lure, dark day, bright lure, bright day, it works 100%. Um, we've tried like stuff that's black or mm. um, very dark. 
on a raining day and you smash them and you think you can hardly see it that's swimming that enough. deep, you know, but... They're still coming around yeah. now. That's a, um, it's a little, another little um, tango Zeric. shad, but yeah. it's Eric, but it's uh, a really deep, dark red. So one way you look at it, it's only black. And yeah. other ways you look at it, it's clear. Yeah. And that one, that colour's like so good. Yeah, that's that. I know that yeah, colour. Yeah. I know. I can't get them at the moment. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. So I'm digging through my shed trying to find another one <laughs> for this these flattered classic. I haven't found one yet, but anyhow. Do you, um, do you change the trebles yeah. So the flow shads, the trebles are very light because they're designed for trout, obviously. Um, so you need to up the ante. So we sell these little ones made by BKK that in the Shinto brand. And so it most has a size 12 or 14 in those little lures. So they're quite strong. They're like, I don't know, three times stronger than mm. what comes out of the lures. I'm so, trying to get my head around that, like some of the BKK mm. 3X or whatever it is. Yeah, that's right. But then your lure, then you're stuck like a lure. Yeah, the when you're yeah, trawling so though, you're when you're trawling, it doesn't really affect too much to, to, as the casting when you're trying to work it, whatever. Uh, so trawling, it's just getting pulled along and the hooks just go with it, so yeah. it's not too bad. Um, we've got some guys that put assist hooks on the back, that's up to you, even on the front. Yeah. Um, and they do well, but um, I, always, haven't, I don't do it. But yeah, I always find they catch yeah. that little bit of snot weight if it's hanging yeah. off the back. Always, it's just always... Yeah, you always can about that. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. there's a lot of things you can do playing around with lures, but as you are saying, don't alter it too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess it's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some guys do. Well, usually I'm changing it because mm. I want to make it stronger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I always try to go, well, should I just take it out of the packet and when it bends, then I'll change it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's all relative to not so much the fish, but to your line. So somewhere on the way, there's the weakest link, right? So if you're running a um, 20 pound braid and your drag cranked up the suit 20 pound braid and you're using those little hooks, you're just going to bend them out all the time. If you're running 20 pound braid and running it light drag, like I said before, you're not going to bend the hooks. So it's up to you guys how hard you fish. Yeah. Mm. And you're going to add to that yeah, speed? general rule is I'll just use the thinnest treble I can get because it goes in better. Go, it does Simple go as in that. Better. Yeah. yeah. You're only using light gear anyway, so yeah. Yeah, like these these are another really good lure duo. Um, these are um, just come out, one of their new models. Shad 62 DR, but slightly changed to the old version. Um, they have good hooks on them, ready to go straight out of the packet. Not many of them, of them do though, unfortunately. <laughs> Rapalas aren't too bad. So, uh, is there still a place for the micro mullet in uh, what Nova Green used to call dog dick pink? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> should we get that one? <laughs> there is, but they're just hard to get. Yeah. He's, gone. He's got a. He's sorry. gone. He's gone? Uh, Has he really? Yeah, he's about to yeah, re release them, but. Is he? Yeah, Did apparently. He? Oh, he's changed manufacturing, yeah. apparently. He's changed what he makes now. Yeah, yeah it's mm. changed. So it's a different lure. I'm still waiting for my order from three years ago. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a hard one. Alan, do the job properly. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a lot of Yeah. 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 Look, they still definitely work. They're tried and proven. Mm. But mm. I, I personally think the colours on the new stuff just... They've seen so many bright pink lures go past. You get a new lure with a new colour, you use it, it's so good for the first year, and then it's on the back burner and you use the new colour. I haven't seen it. So what do you pick up when it's starting working? What? What do you pick up? You always pick up the pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pink you normally do, but um, as Stuart said, like the yeah. flatter classic pink's the number one colour, because yeah. everyone's trolling pink. You know? yeah. 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 So it's going to catch the most fish. Yeah. 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 I can assure you we don't we don't trawl much pink. No, we actually don't. No. Fat Betty was the same. Yeah. Yeah. And in the first day of Classic last year, all the fish came on Fat Betty. Second day, couldn't get a fish on. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. They wise up. They do. Yeah, and, the, and the flathead... Same the flat, country, same yeah. area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Of course, you're yeah. releasing the fish. You can't keep the fish in the flathead classic. You've got to let them all go. So they tell their mates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw a draw, don't get the pink one. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions on that, folks? So, you've got the shallow water, the deeper water, and the deep water. Okay. So, trawling. Um, other than that, 
two-stroke versus four-stroke motors versus um, electric outboards. No one's asked that question yet. I'll ask it. Stewie? Always with the petrol motor. Exactly. And we've got a two-stroke. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So I reckon they come. I honestly uh, reckon they like noise. We've both got electrics, but yeah. I never troll yeah, my electric. No. Because it doesn't bring enough attention to the, it's like you're the teaser. Yeah. And the flatties come up and have a look what's going on. And the electric you're in stealth mode. Yeah. Which is maybe okay for some, for casting, but yeah. not for um, trawling, yeah. not in my belief. And like it, and anyone and, that says they get scared from noise, yeah. how, like try to explain how you can troll with the motor fully down in say two foot of water, you're stirring up mud and rubbish everywhere, yeah. and you catch them like meter dug away from the prop. Yeah, yeah. Like mm. it just doesn't add but, up. Like Michael Green, he, him and his dad have won it many times at Flatter Classic, and they're really good. And Mike used to work with us, and. Um, the, Michael trawls his lure no more than two metres behind the motor. That's what he Very does. Short. And I'm sitting beside him <laughs> and he gets, pulls him out of there. Yeah. And, and that's usually the apple. That's right. Yeah. Very close. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. I've yeah. swum the lure level with the back of the boat, like a rod tip out, and seen it disappear and it's a fish. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I had a jet ski guy come around the back on Sunday in between me and the bank. Yes. And now I'm going, oh, great. And bang, he got one the next cast right under. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stirred so it up, yeah. What you're saying to me resonates most. Yeah, yeah. Really? Was that just lucky? Yeah. Yeah. No, it stirs them up. Yeah. Sorry, Terry? Yeah. So. Michael's trolling just, you know, say two metres behind mm. the prop there. So as he changes the dip, he's going to change the little bit of difference. He's going to change. So it, he wants to no. I, I will admit that's in the shallow water. Yeah. Okay. Shallow water. Yeah. yeah. He'll drop it back when it goes in the deep water. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, um, and two stroke versus four stroke, uh, there's not much difference. As long, yeah, as, as, long as it's an outboard go, I'm not, not too electric. Yeah. The top, yeah. Is the top yeah. of the electric motor is that um, you, well, if you use electric, you chew up the battery too much. You know, yeah. when you want to use it later in the day, it gets windy, the wind comes in, you get no battery power. And they're hard to steer because yeah. the steering from yeah. the front, yeah. the back where you're fishing out of is all over the place. Yeah. yeah the front's right. straight, but yeah. 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 Should ask a question. Does anyone here not have a boat or fish out of a boat? Okay, you land-based mate? I have a kayak. Oh, you have a kayak? Yeah. Okay, you yeah. control kayak, so you control same deal the kayak. Yeah. yeah, same deal. And um, have you got a little sound with the speed on it? Not yet, no. No, so you can just get one of those little, um, what's the little ones from the like Hook. Hook. Yeah. They're like well, a hundred and something that, bucks. Now I've just got the kayak, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, they're about a hundred and something bucks. And uh, they've got speed and, and GPS tracking and everything on it. Yeah. And um, they'll show you Just a slow so. walking speed, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. cool. We got a lot of guys coming that smashed it out kayak, so and they all troll. Yeah. I cast as well, but they don't yeah. troll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so any other questions on trawling? Look for bait. I'd be probably spending eighty percent of my time trawling up on the flats and on that two hour window around high tide. So and on the flats, it doesn't matter which way you go. Doesn't matter, mate. And what was that no. on the boat? Oh preferably oh. under f five feet and under. Okay. Yeah. But don't hit bottom, like don't get stuck. And and we must like when the fish are on, it's really hard. You don't you want to get out of there because you're not gonna get stuck. And sometimes the entrance ends a lot shallower than being up on the flat. Yeah. And that's the bad part. So you think, oh no, I still got a couple of feet reverse, left, you know. Yeah, reverse out, that's why you, you do, you do. Uh, the I've got to tell you, we got some times real quickly. Last last Saturday morning, I went went fishing with my mate. In his boat, and my boat's got like all the tracks on it, in where we go and all that. And I said, "Oh, mate, just, yeah, just go through there. That's where it is. That's where it is." But, but I, first, I didn't look at the tide. It was a very low high tide. It was like a very low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> so a high high. It was a high low and a low high. And um, but I sort of looked at it. I thought that's not too bad. Anyhow, and we're fanging it like thirty knots. And we got to go. I said, "Keep it speed. We're going to get over the bank, and then once we get in there, we're right." And the tide was still coming in about an hour ago. Anyhow, um, we drove ourselves up about 150 metres into the mud with about this much water, and his boat's like 17, 16 foot. Yeah. 17 foot and draws a fair bit with a 90 on the back. And we, we looked at the GPS and we're about a uh, little bit under halfway across the mud bank. <laughs> <laughs> and we were stuck. <laughs> so, so I said to him, this guy's like, right, we'll just dig our way across and then we got about we drove ourselves about another nearly to the halfway point on the GPS of the mud bank before it actually really stuck 
So I jumped out and straight away went up to here in, in mud. There's only that much water on top. And I'm like, and he's like, you all right? And I said, I'll be all right. I'll be right, so I put myself, I've probably been there. So we get, so I'm dragging the boat along. And I was like, nearly going to a heart attack, man. So I said to him, I said, I've got to have a rest, I've got to have a rest. He goes, I'll jump in. And he's only shorter. So he jumps in and I just see his head above the back of the boat because he went down to the mud. And he's pushing it from the back. And I went like a while back into the front of the boat. It was a good cast of the front. And, um, and I'm trying to get my breath back and that was after about two or three minutes. He goes, do you reckon you can come back in again? I said, <laughs> I, said, I, said I looked at the GPS. He goes, look at the GPS, where are we? And I said, we've gone about another 10 metres. We've got about another 100 and something to go yet. And he's like, oh, jeez. So, so I was like, stuff. So I went to hop back in the water. I put one leg sort of over and this other leg got caught up on something. And I flipped in the water and I went down into the water. My hands went down the mud. My face was actually on the mud in under the water. And this one, two legs are sticking out of the, out of the water. <laughs> and he goes, Doug, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> so, I was so embarrassed, man. So embarrassed. <laughs> Anyhow, we had a three hour window and we spent one hour, 40 minutes getting the boat off the mud bank. And then we still got 12 fish in that one hour. We ran out of time. Because he had to be somewhere so though. It was a disaster. So you all got to know about it, okay? <laughs> it doesn't happen very yeah. often. Yeah. So, Stu, um, we're off the, off the trolley then? Yep, Anything off else? the trolley. I think that's oh, about no. it. Um, spots. I'm going to, I'm going to just go yep. show the spots on here. So on in your map. bag, everyone's got a map. Yep. If you want to bring it out, and we'll just run through a few things. Actually, Mike, do, do we get this so I can bring it up on the big screen? Uh, that's probably better. Okay, it's all right. Easy okay. to see at the back, yeah. Okay. So, guys, in your map, the map on the right-hand side, um, which is up around this area of town and good for you in the kayak there, buddy, um, are all my trawl runs that I do um, on the edge of the bank. So I'm using those lures that are sort of around that next size up for that little tiny one. Getting down around that um, eight feet or two metres sort of thing, two or three metres. And the red is the length of the run that I normally would do trawling, okay? And sort of like start, stop to finish, if that makes sense. And on this one here, I'm always trawling north because that's the way the tide comes in. Um, when it runs out, obviously you go the other way, but generally I like that last out of the running tide. Um, and then I will hit it when the tide drops a bit, maybe two hours after, um, if I'm in the area still, I think maybe casting for a couple of hours. So we switch, we'll, we'll trawl when the tide's right and everything's right, and then we'll switch to casting for an hour or two. And then we'll go, hey, that spot's gonna work on two, two hours down the tide. So then we'll quickly re-rig our um, trawl lures and then we'll zoom back over that spot and we'll trawl for another two hours. So that's how we do it. We don't just do the whole day trawling, okay? Now every, when you fish the flathead classic and you get yourself sort of up there in it, every like 20 minutes has a purpose, whether it be trawling or casting, and you need to know the wind, what the wind's doing as to where you're gonna be and if the water's getting dirty in that area, you need to know a clearer area. It's really in depth. It is, <laughs> yeah. Very in depth. So it's like a pre-planned assault on the fish. Um, but those runs there are really good. So um, both sides are Efrens. That's very close if you're in the kayak, mate. To get to run the Efren Island's very good fishing, actually. Crab's really good. Crab Island's been fishing really good this last, um, see, the last two months, actually. Yeah, they haven't vanished and they've been no. netting it so hard that they're nearly yeah. every day and there's just more and more fish there every day. Mm. Yeah, it's and weird. And we're getting quite a few 60 centimetre fish there now, so the quality's got better. And it's close, it's like, you know, if you put it at Howard Street, you're two minutes and you've, you've got your line sorted. Yeah. That's close. Yeah. Where don't they net? Now, I know they've got mm. certain gear, mm. and that is, you know, they love the top of the flats and all that sort of stuff, and mm. they come off and all that, but there, there must be sort of places that, not just oh. low zones, but places where they physically can't, you know, because of the gear, the application can't. Look, I've seen them but nearly everywhere. They can't yeah. net in the Narang River. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mate, anywhere in the Broadway, I think there's a couple of zones here they can't go in, but most of it's um, yeah. Main one that nettable. The Northern Wine Break, they can net in the south, they can't, is that right? Um, um, I know they do go south. Go I've, I've seen them. I've seen them on the bank in front of Aquadu. Oh, they do. They net that yeah. middle stretch through there, yeah. In front of Lowe's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I always thought that was the case too, but yeah. it's not the case. Yeah. The only spot that I know is definite no nets the lagoons up the pin. Yeah, the old lagoon. I think they can do the new lagoon, but the old lagoon's definitely not. But that's mm. about 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think if that, you've got that, a really small area, like a quite a tight little area, obviously it's going to be hard for them to do it. But um, but you're probably only going to get a couple of fish out of it anyway, you know. Yeah, they, they want to cover ground. They say that the chase a lot up in the flats, not flatties. That's mm. they all say that. Mm. Uh, just quick on my trolling. Did you also mm. troll towards Lake Kimbaba, obviously before the before the um, Lake Kimbaba? Um, in Kumba, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty um, good. There are no greenies used to troll there a fair bit, and they won a comp there one time. Yeah. In the Florida Classic. Yeah. So when the weather was terrible. Uh, yeah, it is really good. It's yeah, where the houses sort of end. Actually, I've caught them right up to Tirana Street boat ramp, but where the houses end and down to, as you said, down near the boundary, it's all good trawling through there. Yeah, very good. It's a good area Be to troll too because you cover lots of ground. Yeah, it's actually better trawling there than casting, believe it or not. In that area. It's one of those areas that fish is better trawling. Yeah. 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 Well, there's, I, when you're talking about the, the garden and the drop off, there's quite a steep drop off there on the north side. Yes. And yep. there, is there a channel marker there? I've yep. only been there once. Um, and yeah, there was a really nice flat on the other side that's got a drain in it as well. Yep. Yeah, what? Well, one thing I will tell you is um, if you get those mud banks that are really steep and they're, well, there's mud and there's not much like um, inclined to it with sand or whatever, um, they don't fish very well trawling. But they look good, but they don't catch. They don't catch. Um, casting at those is a different story. Cast it, you get big flatties. Trawl it, you get nothing. I don't know, used to it, but I've never yeah. been on steep banks no. ever. No. no. But where you've got that mud or sandy mud that sort of can't tapers down, a bit of weedle on the edge and that, that's where you get them all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Okay, um, we'll skip the trawling. Everyone's okay with trawling? Yep, cool. Great. Good luck. Um, okay, now we're going to go to... Uh, do you want to do Vibes next year? Or do the big one, Flats? No, I think Flats last. Okay. Vibes next year. Vibes next year. Yeah. So, vibing is... Um, it's funny, like we use uh, soft and hard vibes, but some of took them hard, so we're going to do metal vibes. It's one of those things that works really well at times, and other times they don't know about it. Yeah. But the beauty of, of using metal vibes is it's very quick, and you can do a lot of ground casting in, in quick concessions and move to the next spot, next spot, next spot. Because with soft plastics, you're using a very light jig head, and it takes a little bit to fall down. You can do the hop up, and you've got to wait for it to fall down again. Vibes, it's like dunk, 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 dunk. It's very quick. So the action, you can let it sit there, but it just lays flat on the bottom. It doesn't really do much. You rarely ever get hit to see on the bottom like you will the plastic. But with a vibe, as soon as you go to lift it, that's when you get hit. And sometimes on the fall, but never on just sitting there. Yeah, they right. don't pick it up. They don't pick it up. Well, they'll yeah. pick up a plastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then vibes, I use anything from about one six to about probably or the deep water up to an ounce, but generally half an ounce or three eighths is the best size. Okay. Um, which is yeah. 10 grams. Stewie? Yeah, I like shiny, like um, something with a bit of chrome to it works really good. Um, green's yeah. another good colour. Anything that when you vibe because of the action, you need something that flashes, I believe. Yeah, do you show yeah. your action, Stu? Um, yeah, I kind of just like throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and I'm just a, I wind up so it's tight. And um, once it's tight, I kind of just, I kind of just medium lift the rod. Yeah. I do two lifts. You do two lift, double lift. Yeah, yeah double lift. Yeah. Or if they're really on and um, <clears throat> like they're just smacking vibes, it's really quick. So I just go like one sharp rip. I generally go to the side as fast as you can go, and then just let it sink back down, and they're all over it. Yeah. Mm. Do you spook them at all casting it in? Because you know sometimes with soft plastic, no, they're not too heavy. No, they'll nah. come to it. They'll come yeah. and look. I don't. Yeah. I th I think um, like when a plastic hits the bottom, yeah. I think it brings them in because mm. they lay on the bottom. Like they obviously feel it. It's not like someone walking around so, the flat spooking them. Yeah. But um, when it hits the bottom, like Dougie always used to use half ounce football heads with the plastic yeah. on it. I've changed those the things, last two years. Yeah, but they hit hard, and oh. um, I think they definitely come over. Yeah, have I a do. look. Like yeah. The rim, it the shit out of the rim, right? yeah, yeah, rims timid. They're different. Yeah, a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. These things aren't. So, real. So I'll cast it out, um, take out the stack like Stu said, and I just do two lifts like that. It's very, I'm not aggressive like Stu does. I'm quite timid. Just one, two, then drop it back down again. Take out the slap and do the same again. And that's a lot of time you go to lift it. And I'll, I'll watch it. So I do that first lift. I pause that a little bit for the second. I'll grab it at that point. And other times I'll grab it when I drop it. I'll hit it on the fall. 
Um, but the beauty of, as I say, metal vibe is you get a long cast and you get a, a quick concession and bring it back in. Yeah. So you get a lot to do, you get a lot more chances yeah. than casting a plastic. Guy using plastic next to you, you'll only get half the chance you have for the same time period that you have. Yeah, you've done like two or three casts and he's still yeah. on his first one halfway yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. So they're great for that sort of thing. And when the fish are on, you're, you're a lot faster getting fish on. On top of the flats again? Oh, no. No, no so I wouldn't vibe under about two metres or a metre and a half, maybe. Yeah, I'd vibe, vibe in 500 mil. Different. Shallow. Yeah. Size-wise, um, as in the size uh, of the lure, not the weight? Uh, size, well, yeah, I think it's quite small, actually. Like, yeah. So anything from about that size, maybe 35 mil to 60 mil. Yeah, that's helpful because um, where I live, there's lots of tiny bait fishing lines. Like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you got some little one, a little one in your bag. It's plastic, that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that size there, mate. Yeah. Some of them had tail spinners on it too, by the way. Um, and some are hybrid, some are actually rubber and lead internal. Um, so they got a bit more, when they grab it, they want to hit a bit more. Um, and not, not spit it out, but flat is, they're, they're a sucker for getting hooked up really easy. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 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 So. Um, but in vibes, there's not really that much difference in action. Some are a bit more deeper, a bit more flutter maybe. Um, but most of them are just weighted in the head, and they fall back down, swim back down. You'll, and when you get a lift up, you'll feel the drrr, drrr. Well, as soon as you feel the <laughs> But uh, I just feel yeah. the weight, just want the fish in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But um, but there's, honestly, the like, there's no right and wrong. Yeah. As long as you can feel it vibrate at some stage, you're doing something right. And with, and with vibes, I really like to work them in deep water when you have a bit of current. So you can cast, um, you can actually cast down current, which you can't normally do with a plastic because it doesn't get to the bottom, and actually hold it and hold it, whip it back, you know, um, working it um, against the current. But cast the up current, it, it's going to come back even faster to you. Okay, it's, it's just the way it works. But uh, yeah, vibes are pretty good. Um, but I would probably only. Um, be using those, I'd have one rigged up with my soft plastic time, so I'm not going to be doing it all the time, but uh, when I do cast plastics every now and then, if I don't get a bite within about three casts, I might grab my vibe and cast it out and have a quick over vibe. And maybe do a bit further cast, and maybe move the electric over to there and have another go over that way a bit further. You can actually go and do a bit of searching with the vibe. Yeah. And being right out there, the action is still the same as there, it's very similar. It doesn't matter how far away it is. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. on the pull, I'll do the first or second one. It's normally the go for me. Yeah, I always just leave it on the one that it comes with. Which is? I never change it. <laughs> it's the second one. But really, nah. I don't yeah. want to complicate things, I just chuck it on and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Normally it's nearly always in that middle hole. Yeah, middle yeah. hole's normally the yeah. go. Yeah. 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 Um, well, good question, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, any questions on vibes? Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did you get one? Yeah, oh, it's over there. Around. Oh, okay, pass yeah, it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, mate, we'll make sure you yeah, get one. No, Are using the same rod setup, or what's the rod setup for the box? A little bit stiffer. Yeah, only a little yeah, bit. Um, just to, when you rip it, it's just a lot more weight on the rod. Um, mm -hmm. If it's too soft a rod, you won't set the hook, or the lure won't work effectively. Yeah. So mm. people make it bite more. Yeah, you feel it a lot more. You can kind of whip, rip it through weed a bit better. And yeah, you can mm. swim a bit nicer. One thing with vibes, so guys, is they really love the weed. They love the weed. Yeah. Okay, so um, because they're so hard and they fall so hard down to the bottom, um, and you've got th trebles on there, it just rips through the weed and gets the weed. So they're forever getting weed on them. And you, once it stops vibing, you know it's got weed on it, then one in, take it off, and throw it back out. A bit like trawling, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the trebles on them is a, is a drama for weed. Yeah. Um, but they work well. Some kind of double hooks, some kind of trebles. Some guys put assists on, on them as well. Like your ZX40s, which we've we got, oh, we got them downstairs, don't we? No, they're out. But, yeah. um, they're really good yeah. on flatties too. Yeah. They're very small, little, I mean, 40 mil. Yeah, like honestly, any metal vibe or like those ones with the tail spinners on or whatever, if you wanted to make it work like a ZX40 without buying a ZX40, yeah. it's like a problem with assist, just put assists on them. Yeah. 
We have a cyst down there that yeah. fit on perfect and they've got the, the little tint, the little tatters on the tail as well yeah. and the UV to the max. So yeah. the and yeah. the system. Yeah, well, we'll yeah, less, I, I, less weed, that's for sure. Yeah, and with that rate, it's probably spinner. better. Oh, okay. Yeah, leg yeah. spinner and just put this cyst over it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'll, yeah. yeah put the cyst under yeah. on the first one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, take the treble off. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The ZX40, the EcoQ? Yeah. 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 yeah, we're just waiting for him to turn the gun. Like, <laughs> like with the uh, I do, I do in the deep with the bigger vibe and with definitely the soft vibes, yes. Yeah. I'm mean, fishing the deep, say around the pin bar or, or wherever. Yeah. Um, and on Kalinga in that area as well, but it's sort of like 10 or 20 meters, 15 meters deep. Yeah. It's effective, yeah. but it's snaggy. Because yeah. you've got six hook points. Instead of like one that you would have with a jig head or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. what I find mm. with the X40. It doesn't seem to foul as much as your standard vibe with the treble. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 that's right. Yeah, no, we finally got this yeah. little cyst in now. So that's very, a lot of guys are changing it across. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, we write down if you jump onto the flats, this is a fairly intricate on, on this one. Mm. We like fish in the flats. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay, Stewie likes big lures. I'll get straight to the point. He likes big lures. I like little lures. So yeah. You can do yours first, Stewie. Sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Doug said, I like bigger ones. I think, honestly, if you're going to spend all the time up on top of flats, I want to make it worthwhile. I just want to catch bigger ones. I don't want to catch heaps of little ones. Um, having said that, you still catch little ones doing the same thing. Um, so I kind of, I'm 15 centimetres plus in size, like 150 mil plus. I won't throw anything under under that. Um, the Rapalas are really good. These are just a max wrap. I don't fish anything over about, say, a metre and a half. A metre and a half would be tops. Anything else shallower. Generally, the banks that I'm fishing are out of the water at low tide. So they're fish that move, they move on top of the flat and they don't move up there for no reason. They move up there to feed. So you're targeting that fish that's there to feed, it's there for bit of sun maybe um, when that water's really cool but they're there predominantly to eat and they are generally quite active um, but i just think if you look up on top of a flat you don't see heaps of at certain times you do but most of the time you've got like garfish will move up there wide end will move up there everything's long and skinny you don't see many brim cruising around like way up in the shallow stuff um i don't know about you dougie but I oh, know you like them. They're, they're all stewy fish. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're all running marathons up there. But, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah. I, I like that longer, skinnier profile. Yeah. Um, we've got lures downstairs called Athlete. Um, you didn't bring any up. I didn't bring up. No. No, didn't but um, they're a little bit longer than that. They're really, really good. Um, look, some guys take the third hook off. I just leave all three hooks on as long as it doesn't foul on itself. Generally, if it comes with three hooks, I think... It's better with three hooks. I'd rather have nine hook points in the water than six. But um, yeah, I, I don't throw a lot of small stuff. I like bigger stuff. Mm. Would you yeah. chuck out like the big MMV wide end like um, John? Yeah. Shows? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that size, I've thrown them. I've thrown the big um, crossfires, like the big bent minnow style. Um, the storm glide baits, they work really good. But the biggest, like. My favourite is probably going to be that Rapala going around, like that shape, just a single, um, no joint. But occasionally I'll throw that stuff around just for a reaction bite or something like that. Do the process around. Yeah. Sorry? No, they, they, they make them up to um, one, no, not that big. Yeah. 120, no, I think. Uh, Double clips. Mm, yeah, I thought they made them bigger than that now. Oh, uh, I don't anyway. so. But the uh, problem is with the double clutch is the bigger you go, the deeper they dive. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So if you're only fishing, say, a metre of water, yeah. We caught, um, like, Doug and I went fishing last year, about this time, actually, mm. and we got, well, I got an 89? Eight, yeah, that's a big one, nearly 90. 89 yeah. centimetre flatty, and the boat wouldn't float where it was. Yeah, and, like, Dougie's only got a Hornet, so it only draws 300 mil. Um, but, yeah, it wouldn't float, and it ate it right up there. That's why I don't use fast days up on the flats. They always, I don't know why, they always yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah
Yeah, if you use a sugar pan, the bibbles type one, you could use those, they're fine. Yeah, top water's all right. Top you water's catch good right. flatties on uh, top water because they're always uh, looking up. The, the MND splash top. prawn, like I reckon I'll smash it. I've never used one yet because I didn't have the big one out last year, but I'm going to use it this year. Yeah. I'll pass that around to that. But, um, um, with yeah. um, colour, do we work? Obviously, it's pretty clear up top of Yeah, yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah, I like um, anything that puts off a bit of shine. Yeah. So any yeah, chrome or like um, something, yeah. Particularly chrome. Like you could have chrome with a green back, like it looks like a gari then, or chrome with a gold back, it looks like a white end. The biggest thing is if you have a look at a flat, like on a high tide, the amount of white in that you see flashing around, it's amazing. And they actually flash. Like the way that they feed, their nose down, their tail up, and they're flashing around. Yeah, you've got a lure with a bib and it's swimming down and it's hitting the bottom. It looks like a white in feeding. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, like these are the new Shimano ones. They're a swim bait, um, but this is a really good concept. They're brand new, I haven't had the chance to use them yet, but um, they actually, they've got really sharp hooks on them too. <laughs> but um, they, fold in, yeah, they fold in half. So the reason, yeah, the reason being is um, when you throw it, anyone that's thrown a swim bait before knows how they're so annoying to cast. They dart off, they're not accurate at all, they catch different angles of the wind and get blown everywhere. That's the excuse he uses for casting inaccurately. But. <laughs> These ones fold in half so it's much more compact. So it'll actually throw to where you want it to throw. Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as it hits the water it's back to normal and that's it. Yeah. Yep. But um, they cast the really hook, good. The hook design to that too. Yeah, so the hooks, the hooks are actually like on a little fixed system, and um, when it's just so they don't foul when they cast, and then once you hook a fish or whatever, they actually pop out. So they're on just like a little clip, so they don't. If they were out when that folds in half, they'd foul on themselves. But they're a um, a really good looking lure. Mm. Yeah. You pass that around. No. Nah, no, no, we only got them no, last week. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that had the big M and D. I'll try that next week, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll leave it out of the packet, but just watch out for the hooks because it's really sharp. Let's do your action, mate. Do you want to just grab your heavier rod? Yeah. So I'll look. So when I'm casting this stuff, because of the weight I'm using, the heavier rod, um, I still just got six pound on it, but um, an older six pound, so it's thicker. But um, I always run twenty pound leader, sixteen or twenty. Um, and I generally tie a loop knot to the lure, and every now and then the loop breaks, and I've got to drive or walk in and pick it up. <laughs> but um, when it casts it off, but I always, it depends on how deep it is, but you do want your lure to hit the bottom occasionally. But generally, I twitch up, and I'm pretty constant. Like I'll kind of keep twitching it pretty hard, and I'll just kind of wind up the slack as I'm twitching. With those big swim baits and glide baits, it's just a slow wind, or you can kind of rake it and it'll swim, or you can kind of like twitch it on the side and get it to really walk a bit more. But um, predominantly, most of the time, I'm throwing like that big minnow style. Mm. Yeah, and it's pretty constant. 20 pounds, too, sorry. Uh, 20 pound leader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just six pound main. Is that just because it's a reaction bite, so they're not liable to be streaked by it, or you don't? Yes. Yeah, it's not as. Critical no, you can get away with it. action's definitely critical, but um, I just think that at the end of the day, it's a bigger. It's a big bigger lure, so it can pull the line around. Yeah. The little lure can't do that, but a big one can. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. if they're zoned in and they want to eat that, like being that big, you know, yeah. they're going to eat it. Yeah. Have yeah. yeah. you ever used a bait cast that like, say, a light para outfit? No, I haven't. No. I like a long cast. You just can't cast long enough. Yeah. Like, I know you've got some guys use swim bait rods and all that stuff, but. You still cast a lot longer and easier with that. And so yeah. when you were saying cast on, obviously it's good to have a longer area that you can fossick, as it were. Like yeah. Are you, are you also trying to do that to keep yourself as far away from the fish as possible? Yeah, they spook pretty easy in that shallow water. <coughs> um, like I'll throw it as far as I can and n maybe not even to anything like barren yabby flats. Yeah. Like if you just walk along the back of wave break on a low tide, look at all the flatty lies, there's heaps and they're massive mm. and there's nothing there. The only thing that draws them there is bait, like big wide and stuff up there. Yep. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What sort of weight rod do you look at that? Uh, I think that's about 10 to 17 pound or something. Yeah, generally yeah. around 8 to 17 is yeah. good. Yeah. 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 But you just want quite stiff. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Just for hook set. That's all. And I fish that drag locked up, tight as I can go. Yeah. As soon as, only to set the hook, 
because it's quite a big hook on those lures, and then I'll get one run out of them, and I'll loosen it off. Yeah. 4,000 is good. I like falls. I cast further. Yeah. And just a bit more power. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think there's on that all those other combos we've got there to show oh, yeah. you later. But I think um, that's a four. On yeah. One, yeah. So this is like kind of a, a better range one. Uh, just a comment that Dougie's done off of Vanford. So very light, super light. And um, you can see the rod is quite stiff. So quite pokey in the tip. And mm. it'll just set all those hooks. It's just for. A, cast in the extra weight, and B, set in those bigger hooks. Yeah. Yep. So, any, uh, that one's, they're about 860. I think we're on special tonight for, I worked it out. <laughs> um, 549. Yeah. Like the, I think they're about 349 online. The rod's about 300 bucks. And the line's about 100 bucks. So, yeah, it's a pretty deal. Like heaps of twitch. I always run them down actually, like hold the rod tip down. Mm, yeah, yeah keep it underwater. They're pretty um yeah. like they're, they're very radic. clumsy. Yeah, on the top. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Tangle. Oh, yeah. oh like Taylor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like So many tail at the moment this year, it's incredible. Let's get that back for a second too. Just show my action, it's a bit different yours. <laughs> <laughs> so any more questions on Stewie's big lure style? I know yep. we're on hard bodies, but yeah. you, uh, in a soft plastics, you know, the Silstar slapsticks. You know, yeah, still you, slapsticks you like or that. sluggos or that type of thing. Yeah, like, to be honest, when they first came out, Terry, they were really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Like, smashed on it. It was so good. And um, that was when I finished school. And instead of going to school, is I flatty fished every morning and worked in the shop in the RV. But <laughs> I caught, in that week, I'd caught more big flatties than I had in, the, like, 10 years before that. Just in a week. I think I got a 92, a 98. 88s, 87s, like all good fish, and heaps of little ones as well. But for some reason, they're off it. I, I've been caught a fish on for three years now. And I always pull it out and just give it a crack. Yeah, give it a crack. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you that don't know what it is, it's like a nine inch, it just looks like a solid block of, like a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> They've got no, not much action, they glide rubber. a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, they look a bit like a gary mm. when they're swimming through, but yeah. Dino but likes them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Dean. Yeah. yeah, they're just not on it. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've like thrown it and it's like there's a flatty, say, I don't know, here to the back of the room and you see it as it goes over the top, it's like they're gone. Yeah. Like it scares them. I don't know, traumatic experience maybe, <laughs> but yeah. 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 Yeah, they just, they're not on it. They don't like it. They used to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions for Stuart? All good? Okay, I'll tell you about my, my experience on soft plastics. I don't use anything over 150 mil. <laughs> so he's over 150. So in your bags, you've got a, a big one and a small one. The small ones have bent me over it. Um, so have a go on each one, see how you go on the flats. And see, you can tell us which one works better, Stewies yeah. or Duggies. <laughs> Those big hard bodies in your bag, like the longer one, they're actually really good. I've used them a bit this year and they're really, like, really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, guys, um, <laughs> but my, my style and technique is very different to Stuart. So the only thing that we do similar is I like to cast a long way. That's what I like to do, same deal. Um, but I tend to do, um, I, I do rake it a little bit and I do sort of just slow wind it. But I do a bit of barra style fishing. So I like to... Um, Cast out, look for bait, and, and as Stuart said, look for the flathead. So yeah. make sure you've got polarised glasses on. Really important when you're fishing the flats. And you're trying to see the flatties. You'll see them chasing bait. You'll see a dark shadow shoot around. Or you'll just be using the electric and just move a little bit and you see one shoot off over there, you know. They won't go far. They'll maybe go 10 metres, maybe. Yeah. And if you cast in that direction, you will catch that fish a lot of the time. You hook it. It's amazing. I reckon, what, 80% chance? Yeah, well, that one that like I caught last year, we spoke that driving in. Yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. 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 It's just that my eyesight's yeah. a little bit better, I saw where it swam. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, a, it's amazing And also the time I lure on my memory. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah. so what I do is I'll cast it and um, I'll do a little bit of a wind, a little bit of a wind, and then I'll pause and I'll do like a little barrel fish and I'll just sort of just twitch it and like hop the lure um, whatever type of lure it is, I'll sort of hop it on the surface like that and they get smashed. <laughs> you got to trust me on that one. You see this work. And uh, 
And the it, one day that it worked, he did tell me up. So it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, works all, all, all the time. So, and I'll do that. Then I'll just do, just do a slow wind and a slow move again as well. But I do a lot of um, pausing and just twitching the lure. Twitch, 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 twitch. And they just seem to inhale it. I don't know if it's like a little bait fish image on the top or it might be. Because most of these lures, all, they're all floating. You don't want sinking lures when you're chasing those floaties on the flats. It's got to be floating. And you want it to come back up. Okay, really important. Um, some of the styles I like, I don't mind things with rattles in them as well. Got a loud, dull rattle. Um, it doesn't scare them away at all. I like, like Stuart said, like whiting colours are yeah. really good. Um, natural sort of mullet colours. I'll pass these couple around. Yeah, I think rattles yeah. make a really big difference actually. I really like If I'm going, If I'm going to use a bent minnow, I'll use a small size. Okay, like that size. Okay, keep it small. Like Stuart said, same, same style. He's got to keep it from coming to the surface. Keep it down a little bit. So run, drop your rod tip down and rake it to the side a little bit more lower. Not up a bit high. I, I like a lot of high stuff when I'm using the, those, like that style. Um, but lower, yeah. And um, like things that we sell. So many guys, especially the older school guys, they still smash floaties on gold bombers, you know. It's like very barra type fishing. There's a very similar technique, similar style. Um, other lures that have been out that are really good. I've given this a go, so I haven't got them this week, but they're new. Yeah, they new, look really good. Yeah, they look really good. I think they'll smack it. The bait fish this year have been really small, guys. So there have been a lot of little, like little white pillies everywhere. And that's when you catch a flatter, they just spit them out everywhere. And I think my little lures are going to outdo Louis, do his big lures this year, but that's what I reckon, honey. Yeah. But um, I reckon give the little lures a go. Other things that'll work well, um, like jerk baits from Rapala, those sort of things there. Like the tail pops down, um, they work really good. And um, just keep it in that smaller 100 to 125 mil, 140 max. But I do like the big athlete. That is my go-to in the bigger lures, which is what Stewie's talking about. They're yeah. 170? 170 or 174. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. They're yeah, fairly they're long. Yeah. They are a really good lure. Um, but yeah, if I can tell you anything to do, um, I'd be looking for weed clumps and casting it to the edge of the weed, weed patches. Um, they will come up from six foot deep and grab a lure that goes down a metre. That they will do that. And when I'm fishing, say the lagoon, say up at, on um, the pin there, I'll actually cast it up onto the sand. It's on the high tide, right? I'll cast it up onto the sand and bring it, bring it back into the water and get hit. I've had been hit like I reckon yeah, like a metre off the. Not even not 30, even, yeah. 30 centimetres off the water. In the wool looks about that deep, but they're buried, right? And those and I've pulled like 80s out of in that shallow water. Up right up on, it's running to the sand. Yeah, so, uh, as Stewie said, they come right up on the flats. So. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, I think, as Dougie said, he always throws to uh, like weed clumps or anything. I think the biggest thing is if there's a very small feature on a massive bank, don't overlook it. Yeah. Like it could be a log, like the mm. 80 centimeter log, and there could be three flatties sitting within two mm. meters around it. It's mm. a draw card. And there's lots of bait around that log or yeah. crab pot or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Crab pot stingray holes like on a certain yeah. edge. Yeah. 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 And if you get those like those mullet little schools that swim on the edges, they're always they're with it. They're feeding on those mullet as well. Yeah. Just cast at the mullet, you know, there'll be something in the area. So yeah, yeah definitely give that a shot. Yeah. Um, probably besides that, um, a bit of S factor doesn't hurt on your lure. A lot of people don't understand. I think it's just for soft plastic it's only but definitely good for on hard bodies too, guys. It's a little bit cheating because you're sort of putting out some, some smell that they yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. Stewie needs all the help he can get, so I suggest yeah, right. to yeah. keep On doing a hard it. body, I always put the S factor under the chin because if you put it on the side, I reckon it falls off too much. It's too slippery. Good call. So it holds it there. It's like a little back eddy of it. You know, let it like enough scent off, but not all of it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Um, I want to teach us about handling a big flatty, what to do. and. And how and how to net it's really important. So, how many people have lost big fish to the net, big flatties? If you haven't, I think you're lying. Because <laughs> even I have. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and when you see when you get a flathead, a big one on, it's pretty daunting. Like it's like wow, that's that's big, you know. And like you sort of get a bit scared because you don't want to net lose your mate's flathead when you're the net man, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of techniques to netting for the past that net history. So first I'll suggest to net something in this style. Um, the ones like that one there, Stuart, 
they're too slow through the water. Like the, yeah, the holes that, are too slow. a little slow. one, but they're okay for little flatties, but um, they're too slow through the water. And we've got a bit of current even worse. So um, it's just, you get bigger versions, even the Environets. Environets are great nets, but they're too slow for flathead. So my suggestion is one with bigger holes in it. Um, unless you like taking um, hooks and lures out of um, the normal mesh type nets, they're okay, they work well, they're very easy through the water and they're very light. Um, but my suggestion is to go rubber because the, the hooks don't get caught up in there, okay? And it's really easy to get the fish out and get the lure out as well. But you want something at least that depth. It, a lot of these nets used to be made with only that depth, the rubber ones, now they've got deep ones. And they'll take like a fish up to a metre, no problems at all, they stretch as well, okay? Um, and it needs to be at least that big in the opening. So yeah, little nets that were real shallow, they're like a little trampoline. They jump <laughs> in, they're out, they're gone. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, Stewie has a habit of hoiking anything at about 60 and under into the boat <laughs> without a yeah, net. Anything under 60, mate, I'll just pull in, straight in. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't like to, I don't like to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Up to about 50, I will, but yeah. Yeah, the flat classic. What was that? On three pound braid. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, don't worry, I, I, I shiver. Yeah. Especially doing, the, especially doing the flathead classic, I'm like, <laughs> anyhow, I'm totally out, but anyhow. No. So I, um, when you've got a flathead coming, um, quite often they'll come down with the current and they'll try and swim past you. At that point, you have one shot at it. And once it goes in the current, it's hard to get him back a lot of the time. So that one point when it comes down the current, you just reach out as far as you can or wherever it may be and go deep and scoop it up. If you put the net in the water and try and bring him to the net, they, they always shoot back. They don't like it. You've got to sort of go in with the attack and like get him, if that makes sense. That's what I find in the MAU still, but. I hate doing it that way because I reckon they see you. But um, <laughs> they do. They do. They've got their, their eyes on the top of their head, and the moment that you go like that, they're gone. So I always just have the, I always I, have the net low. I'm going to take a video of this next time we're out fishing. I always, have, we'll the, check. I always <laughs> have the net low, and I, can't, I do scoop them. You gotta be pretty quick, but That's um, I, said. I have it low, but no, you have it in no. the water though. Yeah, pretty close to the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. Normally, I got my fish on the top. It's about falling off. It's sat there for like five minutes while he's casting. I say, Stuart, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a fish on, Doug. Yeah. Well, I lost two fish over sixty, and they bit me off last year on the Plateau Classic first day because yeah. somebody. Missed him with the net. Uh, well, they're that close. But my, so my son... <laughs> not a soft topic my, or anything. My son, Jack's not fishing with us this time. Isn't he? Oh, was, oh, this is going to be our only hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, if oh, don't ever, don't ever, if a big fish don't let, lift it, actually, it'll shake his head and, and rasp off your leader. Yeah. You've got to keep his head underwater. Yeah. I reckon if they flick their head up button, they're coming towards you. Just you just got to keep oh, pressure. Okay, yeah. So it's so, it's a hard one. Yeah. Like I wouldn't purposely yeah. lift it up and then try to scoop no, them. No, because I like I try to keep the fish's head in the water as long as possible. Hmm. Yeah. Them, so. Yes. Yeah. So any fish like say fifty centimeters and under, we actually surf surf them on the top of the water because yeah. once you get his head out, they just they come straight to the boat. Yeah. But once his head down, it's a net job a lot of the time. It's the opposite way of what you're saying, you know? Yeah. But over that, no, you play it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, handling a flathead, I, I didn't bring a pair of grips up. Um, I have got one here somewhere, I think. In one of these bags. Yeah. Sorry, guys, for a sec. This is the same tackle bag I use in my, um, when I go fishing. Plastic one. <laughs> so. With the, with the lip grips, um, to get a flathead out of that net, if you try and grab him in the mouth, they'll, they'll shake and they'll rasp away the skin both here and here on, your, on you. Um, you need to use a pair of lip grips of some type, whether it be the plastic ones or that style. Um, you just need that, that style of grip, okay? And um, has everyone got a pair of those? They all know how it works. So it, it hooks in the mouth. Won't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise still try to lift me out of the boat. Yeah. Um, and um, then it hooks in behind the, the hard parts. You always put it on the bottom lip, never the top lip. Okay? Never open their mouth. No, that's right. They never no. open their mouth. You try and prise it open. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're no, no. like they're pretty good. You see some big plastic ones, and they're very, very like they're real thick. 
Yeah. And they're hard, but those ones there, you can kind of sneak in sidewards and flick them. That makes yeah. sense. I'm sure they know you come. Oh, they do, yeah. yeah. They've got those eyes that look up, so Stewie says. Yeah, they do, they see you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that's a really important tool. Another thing I use, I use a hook out gun, which I didn't bring it, but especially for the flathead. I guess I, uh, no, I haven't got one here, sorry. Yeah. They're downstairs. But they're a little tool that, it's like a little little gun thing, and you pull the trigger, and this little um, hook thing that's in a tube, you put that onto the treble, and it pulls it back into the tube, and then you just twist it out of the fish. It's as simple as that. And you've got those little sub 40 centimetre ones that are pain the backside and spike the hell out of you. You just hold the fish over the side of the boat, you went on, on the trebles on the, on the trolling, and, um, and just put that on there and just go like that, and just fall straight off. Yeah. Very easy, you don't need to touch it. Yeah. So they're a guarantee, otherwise you get a wet rag and you're going to do it all. It's not good for the fish either. No. 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 I just use a pair of like um, forcep saw, just stainless, they're re like super long, because the amount of times that you get them and they're like halfway down the throat mm. when you're trolling or whatever, it's amazing. Mm. But then the weird part is you could have them sitting on the deck while you're trying to rattle around and find your pliers and you turn your back and it's flicking around and the lure's there and the fish is over there. Oh, no. I don't know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite often. Yeah. Yeah, quite often. Yeah, yeah. that's right. No. 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 Um, so tools of trade, yeah, so net, bow grip, or oh, not bow grip, that style, and um, a hook out plier or hook out gun. A pair of good braid scissors is really important. You never got enough scissors. And um, that's probably about it, I think. Yeah. 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 Brag yeah. mat. Take a brag mat or some type of measure because the day that you forget it, oh, you're, you're not going to remember it. You're going to catch something good. Oh, she's got a hook out. Oh, she, here you go. You've been watching us or listening to us. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll pass this around. That's the hook out tools. Um, the different quality. That one there is a lot better quality. That one there's a basic one, which is not too bad, though. Um, that's. All you need, something like that style. They work so good. And just make sure you've got a good little pair of scissors. These things are really good. And you want you want scissors that'll cut braid. I don't have any braid here. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's yeah, it's on it. Yeah, I've got some braid here. Zip it A. I'll put my glasses on real quick. But you, what you want it to do, you want to be able to hold the braid. You know, if you hold a braid tight, obviously it cuts easy, but loose braid, if you can cut it um, at like a millimetre, at a time, with no tension on it, that's a good pair of scissors. Yeah. If it sort of like doesn't do anything, that's a terrible pair of scissors. So, it needs to be able to cut it real easy. Um, and, I don't know if anything else yet to show them. I think that's about it, really. Yeah. 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 So, is there any questions at all, folks? Yes, mate. So, um, I used to think that you're, you're standing at the front there, you're on the deck, you're on the bloody, and they're gone, and you're like, oh, damn. Yeah. But you would go, ooh, spot lock. And cast in the area, 100%. Yeah, just keep on going over there, over there. Yeah, even, well, I'm try and see which way it shoots off. Yeah. Is, make sure you pull the rods on. See which way it shoots off and cast in that direction. Yeah, I'll give it yeah. like half a dozen casts, but if you, if yeah. you don't get in that, you know, yeah. But yeah, they don't go too far. No. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I have said in like high tail up a long way. Yeah. But sometimes you'll get it too. Yeah. When yeah. you're trolling, once you hook up and while you're sitting there, would you be flicking at the same time? Um, around the same spot, are they more of a schooling? Um, I, I, you can it, do, but it's a bit hard. Or is it worth staying there for five, have a few flicks? Uh, if you hook up, if you hook up, I would still be going forward a little bit slower, maybe. Yeah. Not much slower, and yes. hopefully the other guys will get one as well. Yeah, keep trolling. Keep trolling yeah. forward. It's too, yep. You find that you have too much dead time if you stop, stop. winding the trolling lure, cast, and then keep going. Mm. Yeah. The hardest part um, when you're in shallow water, especially when it starts to get shallow. Depends on your, how big your boat is though, but when you are trolling with the wind, um, you need to get a little bit faster, even though there's no current, but you, the wind's driving and you've got to get it right. And then when you turn into the wind, if you don't go fast enough, you tend to go that way and that way, it's always it's really hard. Yeah. So you need to go a little bit faster again, but you don't want the lure to go down too deep because it's so shallow. Um, it's, you just got to get that happy medium. Yeah. But yeah. once you get the fish on, um, and, and as we said before, on the shallows, you can go figure eights go everywhere, but Sometimes that only will hit it going that way, yep. even though there's no current. And then try and, it's so more offshore when you're mackerel fishing that. So try and uh, work out which way they're hitting it, and that's the way you're going to keep going. A lot of time I'll do a run around, and I know when I come back that way on the flat, I'm going to get a hit up that alley. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Just a general question. Territorial, are they kind of thinking about my 
Yeah. Yeah. Fishing days where you might see big fish and it's sort of okay. They've got to go around the pond group, but they basically sit in that spot. Or, or uh, I think the big females, the big females, um, have their own little group of males around them somewhere here and there, um, but they do school up. They do big. Yeah. Like we've sometimes caught uh, in one area trawling might be the size of our building here, maybe ten over sixty in one area. You know. In, in the session, so they do school up, yeah. Because I'm also wondering, but, you know, you might go on a Saturday, you book a ripper and you go, I'm going to put it back, um, and I caught it, I don't know, I'm going to take my shaft back. So mm. Next week you come down and you go, I wonder if it's the same fish in the same position or whether or not yeah. it's sort of moved all around the, well, the broad water. But years ago we used to tag the fish in the Flatter Classic back in the day, and um, I, was, I think Greeny actually caught one, was that the same day or the next day? Yeah, it was the next afternoon within like 10 minutes. I caught it next to a red marker near Tipplers, and then it was Michael. It was Michael, Because he got yeah. the biggest yeah. fish for a junior on, it was like 86 centimetres yeah. on day one, and they caught the same fish in the same spot within 10 minutes the next day. It was day a good two. point fish, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Double points. Yeah. 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 I was back, I caught about eight flathead um, in an hour, a pontoon, but I couldn't tell at the time because I was just going, oh, this is awesome. I didn't yeah. think, hang on, is that the same fish? No, no, it wouldn't yeah. be. wouldn't be, I don't think, straight up, no. Maybe next day, like Stuart's saying, but probably yeah. not the same day. Yeah. yeah. So would you circle back over an area where you just got hit? 100%. Yeah. Guaranteed. And I'd probably circle back over there four times before yeah. I'd leave it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good question, yeah. though. Yeah. 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 I think if you're going to yeah. troll along, like, say, a bank that's 500 metres and you throw your lures out and catch fish straight away, I'd probably keep going for a bit. Yeah. But if you get halfway down and you haven't caught one, I'd Jeff go straight back up. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll worry about it. I just yeah. use this one. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. So, guys, just uh, sorry, just um, if you want to get that map out again um, and go to the left side now. So, that's down um, from sort of just north of Kurin Cove, Tipples area, up to um, sort of Wally's gutter. And uh, where the 3.2 is the entrance to Wally's. And their areas I do trawl as well, but I cast those areas more than trawl them, okay? Um, so up on those flats um, and on the edges, uh, a lot of the water here might be sort of... You, you, where the water runs off, off the flat into the deep, if that makes sense. So the, where it says um, Tallinn Island, if you see that, and you've got a red mark to the north of it, up towards the three sort of thing, and one to the southwest, which is um, in that channel heading back down towards the broad water. Um, when the tide's coming in, um, I'm casting that whole edge there. I don't know if you know where that is, it's near that little island. It's where that sort of zigzag is at the top of the, from the broad water to Jacob's Well or the Pin area. That area there. Um, it, there's a quite a prominent bank there just drops off, so you cast up on the flat and bring it back to the deep. And then the other one on the northern side where it says uh, broad water, um, that's more than broad water. Um, they, there's a drain there. They sit there and they come out of that drain, so you cast up into that drain. Okay. Has anyone ever fished that area at all? Yep. Caught a few there? Yep. It's not too bad a spot. Um, the area that goes down to the bedroom, which is the most second red mark on the right side of the map at the top, um, that's where we go to the bedroom. Those flats all through there are really good casting area as well. Yeah, Pandanus, Pandanus, that's right. Yeah. yeah, all around Pandanus is really good. Yeah. Um, Dean won the. Did he won the. Um, it wasn't Top Gun, it was the um, um, shootout uh, afterwards at the Sportfish Club. No, he won our one. Oh, won our one, was yeah. it? Yeah. We, we caught the biggest fish uh, with Dino in a dash for cash around that area. Yeah. Yeah, it was 96. Yeah. On a slapstick, actually. Big plastic, yeah. But he got like 8 over. He so got didn't 80. 80. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in that area. So. That area between um, uh, the Little Island there, it's got a name actually, uh, Tipper's Island, sorry, and Pandanus, that whole flats area there is really good fishing, okay? Yeah. That run yeah. out tight, the, on that little, that side, or this side, um, I can see this. the top, what is it, right, the top right red mark near Pandanus Island, that's a good drain on the run out. Yeah, that's right. That way, that one. Yep. Yeah, do you want to put it on the screen for you, in big size? We can do it. Or are you happy That's to look right. at the map? But yeah, yeah, so there's near Pandanus Island, it drains off there on run-out tide, and a lot of big fish stack up on that corner there. 
And you can throw your big hard bodies or your smaller hard bodies there. And then so on, weedy. on the run in tide where it says Koran Island and Tullin Island down to, um, right down, down to the bottom there, all those little drains that come out on the run in tide, actually run outside tide there, so run out. Because the broad water runs right in up to here, guys. That's where it stops. Yeah, and on, and only from there to the pin bars where it changes. So up to here, it's all fed from the seaway. If you didn't know that. Oh, where was that? Do the tipplers from the pontoon? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Tipplers is a little bit more uh, south. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, right up to those yeah. beacons there is, is where the, the broad water pushes up to. And then it's influenced from the jumping pin north of there. So it's a long way. So you, in reality, you're talking like 20 k's from the seaway up, but from the pin bar, it's only about 4 k's. So the broad water's a lot more powerful. Um, but yeah, so on the run out tide, normally you're going to be going that way out to the jumping pin, it doesn't, it runs back down on the south. So all these little um, areas here that drain off, you fish the drains with casting your hard bodies um, up into those areas there. What about that area? On the left over here, the measure mile. Yeah. yeah, the measure mile casts good. That's got a really nice bank to cast over in high tide. They get up on those flats there. And you'll get them actually all the way around uh, to the oyster leases. Yeah. Right around. Right around the back. Yeah, right around the back. Um, but the trouble is, you know, it's the same problem. We've got, we got so many spots and you you got to think, I, I can only be at one place that one hour of time, right? <laughs> so where do I go? Yeah. Do I go there, 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 there. It's like, oh. so. You gotta go fishing more often so you can try that spot one time, that time yeah. over there, <laughs> another time. Yeah. It's hard. It is. Mm. Yeah. So different times of the season. Mm. You know, in terms of, you know, coming out to the bar or being down here, lower or back up near Jacob's Well, both the ramp and Yeah, good question, Terry. So um, a month ago, Jacob's Well, uh, Cabbage Street Point, that whole back area is where they all were. They were thick. Yeah, they're thick, yeah, exactly they were right. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, but you get the little rats out, and, and, yeah, you get the little rats around crab and that early as well. Um, but generally most of them like Kumba Lakes or whatever area it might be. Um, now they're sort of starting to get out towards the front. They're like Tiger Mile Channel sort of halfway from Cabbage Street Point to the bar. They're about halfway. Um, and they'll be around that sort of Korean Cove, mouth at Coomera, all the shots yeah. down to Browns. Yeah. Um, in that sort of area now, and in about three weeks they'll be, or two weeks, just before the Flavor Classic, they'll start rocking up at the bar, the seaway, and Millionaire's Row in that sort of area. Yeah. And then October when they do the shootout, where they call it the Flavor Comp, yeah. <laughs> which is about a month, yeah. Dash for Cash, that's right, about a month after the Flavor Classic, um, they're heading back up, they're back up to where they are now pretty well. There'll be a few still left in the bar area, but they'll be um, back in the middle area. Yeah, because they come down spawn, and it's all based on water temperature. So when the water temperature is right, yeah, which is that, about yeah, now twenty degrees. Yeah. yeah, twenty degrees is a good temperature for them to the big girls to come down, or the little males rock up, and they do their thing, and then they all go back <laughs> to their home somewhere. Like I don't know where they go, and like you still get flooded all year round, right? But in that next six weeks period of time, it is like flat air. They just they're everywhere. I don't know come from, they don't come from the ocean, I don't think. No. But guys who tell us they get duskies out in the ocean too. Yeah. Um, but um, they they just turn up from somewhere. Yeah, like you don't catch that many during mm. summer. Put it that way. Yeah, like you, you catch a... You many big fish during summer? No. Mm. No. They're that's right. Yeah. But you can go out, like I've been out lots of times in, say, third week of September. It started school holidays. And um, we'd always just go up to Tipples and camp and just spend a week up there. Um, before the Flathead Classic, sussing it all out. And every day we catch, you know, one or two over 80, 70s, 60s. Um, and then the Flathead Classic come and you get similar sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's why they hold the Flathead Classic right at that time because it's the time when the big ones are in, the, in that area and the Nautilus come too. <laughs> so we didn't talk to you about winds. Uh, winds are another thing too, guys. Um, Nautilus winds are the worst wind for Flathead, as in it makes the water dirty and it makes the snot weed come out of the cupboards. Yep. <laughs> so it, kind of, it just rocks up. And um, suddenly wind's not too bad, but it's generally rough, um, but it's good fishing. 
Uh, Eastleys, I don't like. Well, I don't mind Westerlies. Westerlies are one of the winds I don't mind for flat earth. Clears the water up as well. But Northerlies dirties it up. So your two biggest enemies are around the jumping pin area, which is the best area to catch flatty, by the way, I, I believe, is um, Northerlies and big tides. So when we get a big tide um, around the full moon and new moon, the, you get the big tides at night time and don't see it, but through the day it's not too bad. You get about a three hour window maybe, which is two hours before high, one hour after. Within 40 minutes of, of high tide, it goes to crap. This goes dirty on those big tides. Yeah. And it's all because it comes, the Logan just flushes out all the silt and it just fills up the whole jumping pin area. Come down this end of the town, the broadboard is beautiful, clean, nice. Um, unless we have bottom. rain, yeah, yeah, sandy bottom. Unless we have rain, um, we don't get much uh, influence on the northerly winds or, the, or whatever. Yeah. It goes a bit dirty for northerly, but yeah. not from the t not from the tidal push. No, if it's blowing northerly, if you kind of fish from, say, sovereign south, you'll notice the water's a lot cleaner, a lot more fishable, mm -hmm. less weed, less dirty water. So a lot of time um, when we're fishing at Compo, it might be, and it's a low tide start, we, and we know it's been blowing northerly or it's been a big tide, we won't hit the pin till halfway up or two thirds of the way up because it's just too dirty. The fish, it's just too hard. Unless you can find a pocket of clean water. Um, so we'll fish down here and then we'll hit there at the end, you know? Yep. Do you find the um, fresh water runoff um, against silt, but does that affect the amount of weed at all? Um, I don't know what turns, I don't know what makes the, the snot weed turn up. It just turns up. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think it's gonna be due to water temperature. It, it sort of just releases. I think. Yeah, because I've just got yeah. um, down near the area and um, I've watered in, um, in one of the keys. Yeah, good. There's some snot there and yeah. there's some water to say that somewhere will go. Yeah, it does, it disappears. Yeah, it's the end of winter time. Water up, water up, Believe it or not, it's not too bad this year compared to normal. Yeah. We haven't had a big lots of orderlies. We've had lots in the summer, but not now. Uh, so um, it depends what we get, but September's an orderly month. So if you get a lot of northern leaves, it will quickly turn. <laughs> Can't think about it. Yeah. Are you more inclined to just quit trolling when that snot leaves around? Like that? Uh, no, I've caught good fish in it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And yeah, if they've got snot weed, I've, I, I don't know how. Sometimes I've I've been trolling, and the, the snot weed's really bad. As I said, it hits the hits the bottom. You got to one straight back in, take the weed off. But sometimes I've been trolling, <laughs> and I know there's snot on that on that lure because it's not swimming much. But I'm busy doing another lure. It might be. Or looking after my kids, and next time that rod will take off, and I pull it up, and it's like covered in weed, but it's got really? flat on. And I'm thinking, kids must be hungry, you know. <laughs> so, um, but I definitely try and keep your lures clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, don't don't give up. Yeah. You think all the floods affected the flat this year? I think it's. Pushed them I think it definitely pushed them down, Terry. I think definitely the numbers that like, you know, we're going out there say a month ago. They yeah. weren't all big. But you could get 60 in like four hours fishing, which is ridiculous, you know? Yeah. I think that the rain's helped with all the bait. There's so yeah, much more bait yeah. this year. No, not many big fish, no. Yeah, I've yeah, I haven't, I haven't got one about 73 this year. It's true, got yeah. uh, an 80. Yeah, four. we got an 84 in that comp well, a couple of weeks ago. Mm. So they're all Jake as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, yep. So they're gone. They're gone, yeah. Yeah, they're gone from there, I know. We tried there last week. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> we cut back down the middle, then all the shots, and they were there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And you, just, you just made it through there with the electric, and they were just going everywhere. Yeah. They just blaze and just taking off. Yeah. So, so with the Flathead Classic, for those of you who are fishing and, and maybe want to fish it, um, the thing is that you've got to realise this uh, everyone starts pre fishing around July. And there's lots of numbers, and as, as we're saying, they're not the big, but they get big as, as the months come on. But whatever you're doing now, even up to the week before the Flatter Classic, does not happen during the Flatter Classic. <laughs> so, and when it's, and the trouble is you've got weekends off and there's blowing 30 knots and you think, I'm not going out in that crap, I'd rather wait. There's but that's the weather you're going to be having the Flatter Classic. You should be out there practicing in that weather. Like the 30 knots in the classic, oh, that's right, Garen. And yeah. hail and thunderstorm as well, and rain. But, um, so, um, it's because on that time, it's a, the water temperature is different, the snot weed's different, the, the winds are from the north. It's very different to what they are now. So where you catch them now, you would not catch them because of flatter classic generally. You get a couple, but not many. So we always change our 
And maybe you go have a quick look, the second last day, or maybe the last day if you want to pin a few, but the last day is not a good thing to do because they're too scared to bite the next day, you know? So maybe the second or third day before the Flater Classic, you go out and you think, okay, this is where we're going to start. But generally, you don't even start then at that spot, you change it again. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's such a tricky one. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. You really, honestly, if you fish the, say, three days before the comp, you don't want to catch any fish because then you know, not, you know where not to go. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That's, that's right, the biggest yeah. thing, yeah. Mm. Good philosophy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so any questions, guys? You all got it? Okay. Cool. Raffle time. <laughs> oh, just to let you know about this comp. Do you guys know about this comp we got at the moment? Okay, so some of you do, some don't. So you probably read it, but every, how it works, guys, every $50 you spend on flatter gear, you get a ticket into here. And um, and it goes until the, about the 6th of October or something like that. Um, it could be anything. It could be line, hooks, or trebles, that is. <laughs> um, jig heads, nets, rods, reels, doesn't matter. As long as it's flathead orientated. Um, and we draw out on that uh, day four people, four, num four lucky numbers. So how it works is when you get your receipts, you've got to have your, your name in the system. And um, on this here is like a number that relates to that person's... Um, docket at the time. We just put that in, next week your name comes up, okay, so we can find you. And um, then those four people then will fish a comp, which is uh, me and my boat, Stu and his boat, Dino and his boat, that's Big Tall Dean used to work with us, he's a good flatter fisherman, and either Michael Green or another guy we've got lined up, we're going to call him the Steg, because he's all wrapped and you won't know who he is. Um, and uh, anyhow, so that's if Michael can't fish, because yeah. Michael's a doctor, so he's got to try to get the time off. So, um, and so you, we rock up down the boat ramp at like five in the morning. It's a really good day, guys. And you draw one of us four out of the hat and that's how you get the fishers for the day. We are very, very competitive. So, <laughs> so this is why we do it after Flat Out Classic because otherwise we begin with our, our spots away during the Flat Out Classic because we're so competitive we take our best spots. But remember the spots for next year because this is what, because you'll remember where we fish then. So, um, and we go fishing for the day. We leave at about 5.30. Or we'll zoom out, um, you get a lunch pack, and um, the four people will be fishing for, I think first prize about a grand sort of gear, I think about, about 400, 200, and 100. So everyone gets a prize, but that's the sort of gear you get. We fish for like a rod or a reel or something like that, uh, as in the, the boat owners, and, um, and it's a great day. And we fish like the Flathead score, same deal, as the Flathead Classic, and then we come back, I think lines up at three, back at four o'clock, is it around it? We normally fish about one. Do we? Yeah. Oh, I'm a bit later than that, I bet. <laughs> uh, it's almost six well, till one. The tide this yeah. time suits about two o'clock, maybe. So, <laughs> so we'll still be finishing at one. On one of my spots. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sun around there. And, um, and then we put the score sheets together and have some nice food and, uh, and have a few drinks and then we hand out the prize and that's it, done for the day. So that's a great comp. Yeah. So get into it if you can. Um, oh, got one there. Our next seminar, as you know, is on um, soft plastics. Um, I love trolls, as I say, and I love casting on the flats, but I love soft plastics. That's my number one go to. Stewie, what's your favourite? Yeah, one? probably casting. <laughs> it's casting. Casting plastics. Casting yeah. big hard bodies, I really enjoy as well, but plastics yeah. is definitely. Mm. It's, a, it's honestly, it's easier. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, first price, guys, about um, 300 something bucks worth. We've got, um, I think it's a total of about $1,200 worth tonight. And there's eight prizes because there's a few people here tonight. And it's number six. Which is, number six is... Uh, no, next page. Uh, next page, sorry. Uh, oh, it's Terry. Terry. <laughs> Terry, Hiskey. <laughs> so this is Sam's dad. So... I don't know why you don't listen to you. Sam, but you should listen. <laughs> Congratulations, Terry. Cheers, mate. Good on you, buddy. Okay. Um, also my uncle. Uh, so number two. Oh, no, number two. So the next one, number two prize, which is worth about, uh, I think, 200 something dollars. Or nearly 300. It's number two. You're joking me. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Daniel? Hey okay, buddy, well done mate. That's yours mate. Thank you. Cousin. 
Did I go get a bag? Yeah, you did well, mate. <laughs> Dougie. Okay, thanks, mate. It's true last week. Oops. Last week did exactly the same thing. You drew everyone out from the front row. I drew out the guys down the back, so I'm going to help you guys out, okay? Well, midway. <laughs> okay, next one is Matthew Larkin, number 17. You know, Matty? Congratulations, buddy. Thanks, you, mate. Cheers, mate. Okay, next one, I think, still about a hundred and something bucks worth. Thanks, Joe. I'll do another middle one, mate, hopefully. <laughs> I told you, number 26, Jeff. Well done, buddy. Is it amazing how it works? Uh, you draw another one out next. I bet there's a front, front area again. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, buddy. Thanks, mate. We're not Cheers. into conspiracy theories or anything. <laughs> 14. Oh, Stuart. I was about to go. Do, 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 do. Oh, no. Okay, Paul Byrne. Yep. Go ahead, Paul. We made all those questions. Made it worthwhile, mate. You're welcome. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, okay, next one. Oh, I did a stewy. <laughs> Number seven. Which is Norm. You got Norm? Well done, buddy. Thanks, mate. You guys cleaned up tonight. Okay, um, next one. Stewie? So guys, just to let you know, we do have those combos on special. Um, they're around two ninety nine. Oops, that's all right. And they're um, one ninety nine. There's a heavy to light version, flats one, and a normal one for for casting and trolling. Oh no, it's true. Number three, <laughs> Craig. Thanks, love. Cheers. Hi. Good. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll do the last one. Get back down the back, Stewie. 21. See, I told you, something going on. <laughs> Number 21, which is um, Felicity. Oh, it's me. Well done, love. The girls are winning tonight. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Cheers, thank you very much. Thank you. So, guys, thanks for coming along. We are open for another hour. So, everything on the flathead stuff for the next month is 30% off, okay? Except for reels, which will be batched the best price online. Or, in this situation, they're a bit cheaper than online, okay? In the combos. Thanks for coming along. We'll meet you downstairs in about one minute. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart.